And we're back again in the final four of the UB, uh, UVA final four uh, championship match. Title match, who's going to make it to the final two? Here we have Secret Society and SBC. Introduce yourself, big fella. Mike Shaw, representing the DMV's DC Mafia. And this Here is Malachi Moore, representing the PA South of the UBA. Go ahead. We got the final four here today. We got SBC going against Secret Society. Everybody knows both of these teams already, man. These are like the, the top teams in the UBA. And you usually get everybody talking about them when we get to this point. It looks even across the board. I'm up here doing it at this, at this at the bowling, that's bowling today right now, and we about to have a good one. So sit back, everybody get involved. In my opinion, whoever wins this match will win the uh, championship. Definitely, definitely. That's how good these two teams are. No, no disrespect to the other. That's right. But right now, these two teams are the top ones. Like everybody has already said that this match would decide who's winning the title this year. That is correct. And I see in practice, Ace Austin has already started off real good. He's going to lead this team to victory. What do you say about for SBC? What do you think going to happen with them? Been watching them forever. They got the vet Kenny Lowe on the scratch bear, who's, who's been around forever. And everybody knows Kenny Lowe. They, they know what Kenny Lowe do on these moments when the lights are bright. They got a few young guys, but those young guys also in these moments, they step up and they bowl to the caliber that they're supposed to bowl. Well, as you know, as, as you continue to climb the ladder in the playoffs, pressure burst pipes. So even though they might be young, that doesn't mean that they won't really recognize the moment. Again, me knowing these bowlers from SBC, I can give you one of those bowlers. Yeah, give me one of them. Little sir. Rocky Rashawn McCray. When I tell you Shawty's back home can be one of them, he's one of them. But in these moments, he needs his teammates to make sure that he's involved, he's 100% focused, and he stays within the match because there are times when he gets loose and he will lose it and then he will get lost. And in those moments, then you look for the best to come grab the young and to be like, hey, take your time, stay focused, do what we gotta do. All right, but let's see, let's see which one of him, uh, which one of his personalities show up today. Absolutely. We also yes. have one of our guest announcers here, Mr. Sean Dyke Faze. Huh? Go ahead, sir. Hey, what's going on, Voice of Choice? Sean Dyke Faze in here. Always blessed to be around my boy Malachi Moore. And for the first time, but not the last time, my boy Mike Shaw. How Absolutely. you doing there? I see y'all talking uh, um, straight business. And will strict business cartel stand on business today? That's the question. Uh, are they, they going to be standing on business today? Absolutely. But again, even though I know SBC, I've heard a lot about Secret Society. They have my teammate, Miss Carla. So again, it should be a great, great match. There is no automatic winner today. We have to, they have to throw the ball to find out who's going to win so this match. So let me ask you two, you two gentlemen this, this specific question. What's the key to this match up here? On this, on these pair, from 55 to 60, th these, these pairs on the lanes hook real hard. What's the key to this match? Well, the key that has been to all the matches and hasn't happened across all matches is shot making. You want to make shots. Sometimes you um, search for a dollar and you get nothing in return. And when they keep searching hard for strikes, there's chances for messes to be made and probably not be cleaned up. You want to get X's and slashes and avoid dashes, in my opinion. Okay, now that we got all the practice out the way, let's see how the two scratch pairs line up. On Secret Society's pair, we have Ace Austin the second, Bob Bob Moran, and Dave Adams. And who do you have, sir? For SBC, we have leadoff. We have Daquan Tyler the Youngin. Bowling second, we have Mr. Ant Winston. And the man himself, Kenny Lowe, bowling ankle on the scratch there. All right, on the first team handicap, we have Dave Knight Jr., Leon Stone, and Michael Taylor. SBC handicap one, we have the awesomest herself, Tiffany Bell, followed by the Hall of Famer, Chris Johnson, and everybody knows Mr. Marcus Bell. And last but not least, on Secret Side is handicap two pair. You have Keith Poppity, Robert Perkins, and Bill Ripley. Ace Austin starts off with a strike for the first ball. On the, on the scratch bear handicap two, we have Lil Rocky Rashawn McCray, followed by Donnell Bell, and the man this weekend, Mr. Daniel Bright. It looks like here, Mr. Daquan Tyler came off with a strike on the scratch bear for uh, SBC. So we're going to see how it rolls. Man, da da Daquan Tyler definitely has been one of the top bonus. Right. Yeah, on right SBC here, all year from the start to finish. And when I tell you when I mean young, he's always been 
confident. You don't find too many young bulls with that much confidence nowadays, and Daquan Tyler is that bowler. All right, now already on the two scratch pairs, which just sets the tone for the match. Looks like uh, SBC and Secret Society, Bob Bob Moran, he threw a strike in his first ball. This yours. We got Ant Winston up here in the first frame for SBC. What do you think the keys to the game, Sean, uh, Sean Dyke, here, especially in the first game? Well, first game, uh, you guys want, this is a statement game. Um, uh, much different than a WCS match that's usually best of seven. Um, not only um, does your score matter in the first game, but it matters overall. You want to get as many pins. You don't want to leave any food on the plate. You don't want to throw nothing in the trash. And it's also about even though you want to worry about what the other pair is doing, you got to stay focused on your pair handle business because right now you could basically give a, a high tax loan uh, and lend something to the other pairs if need be. Okay, and Dave Adams strikes for the Speaker Society in the first frame. He's rolling on each on six sided pairs, throwing a strike here. What do you think the keys are once again, sir? Again, spares are important. I think everybody that bowls can always throw strikes, but we also know, as you can see, Kenny Lowe throws a split on his first ball here in game number one. He got Every these jitters here, sir. Everybody knows how it goes. Like, you have to make your spares. We all can strike, but again, at the end of the day, match can be decided by anywhere under 30 pins or less. Those can be a few spares here and there from game one to start. So I think spares are definitely going to be key because everybody knows everybody can throw strikes. That's true. And then just like uh, SBC won their, their first round uh, earlier today in, in a very close matchup, this could be that same type of matchup here. So this is why it's important to pick up your spares in the match. Team chemistry is also. I love the energy from teams when you have the carpet getting loud. It's nothing like being able to be up there having support from the carpet. I think support is also key to having success when you're bowling. I agree. Chemistry, but knowing your team, your bowlers, your team plates is also important. Looks like here, splits are in the day from the first team handicap, unfortunately, but we're going to get to those pairs later. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on the strike pair. Yeah, Kitty Lowe first ball was a little bit tad slower. And, and, and if now, anybody... let me ask you a question. Kenny Lowe threw a split in the first ball. What, what does that tend to get in a person's mind, or what does that do for his, his confidence I for the will, rest of the game? I will say the average bowler, yes, that probably will have them doing a lot of thinking. And we all know you don't want to do too much thinking when you're bowling. Could but the with, moment be big, too big for him? Not Kenny Lowe. I was about to say, as far as Kenny Lowe goes, he's been in several big moments. Kenny Lowe knows what to do and what not to do. Yes, he threw a split on the first ball, but I'm bound to bet you Kenny Lowe will make the adjustments for the next shot. Sean Day, what do you think, sir? Well, um, this is going to be my first time seeing Kenny Lowe. Um, you could tell, well, first of all, let's get this out of the way. All these bowlers have been here before. All these bowlers are big-time players. Usually when you get big-time hitters, you get big-time hits. And let's see if the hits are going to keep on coming. Now, with that first frame, that right there tells you a lot. He has the entry angle. Now it's all about speed control, mind control, 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 and control. You need three C's, or else you're going to have CC's of disappointment. In the first match, in the first round, uh, Ace Austin struggled, but this time here, this young fella come out here throwing two strikes in a row on the scratch pair. So he's correct everything that he had issues in the first round. Dave Knight on the first team handicap and have a little trouble. We need to see if he can correct his thing, his uh, issues before the second and third game. We all can agree. They're always a little jitters. It depends on the caliber of the bowler. If they've been in certain situations where they've had their moments where jitters were jitters, they get right here now, and this is just normal bowling to them. All they got to do is go up there and execute and throw a good shot every time. And I will also say, too, to add to that, if you are struggling, it's important that your teammates not leave you out on the island. It's important that everybody discusses, hey, this is what I'm seeing that you're doing. Hey, you're leaning to the right. Hey, your, your feet is too fast tonight. You're off balance. These are the things that in a big match like this that can make a big difference. Communication is key. I don't care where you're bowling, what who, or what you're doing, especially in UBA matches. It's nothing like being able to communicate with your teammates to say, hey, gave that shot that might have felt good to you, but from back here, it looked like this. If you notice that teams are not communicating with each other, those are the teams that tend to be on the sidelines when it's all said and done at the end of it. Yeah, I have to definitely agree with that. And that's a C that I didn't mention. The fourth one, communication. Uh, communication right now is paramount. And if you are not communicating, if you're not um, telling your, your, your neighbor what you see from their window, then you're letting them get into a situation where they can't even get out of their own front door. 
Oh, yes, sir. And see Kenny Lowe left a ring and seven pin on his second ball. So let's see if he can get a strike on his next go round because that's important as you continue as the games continue to go forward. I would say after the first two or three balls that you throw in the match, you begin to hopefully begin to settle down in the ch in the next uh, champion, the semifinals. I'm all, I'm always a fan of that. As you can see, a strike. I'm always a fan of being able to get comfortable. Mo Nine times out of ten, as us as bowlers, when we're doing it in practice, we're trying to find the line, trying to find out where we want to play, and again, communicating with our teammates. By the second frame, as you just said, of the game one, you kind of like know where are you want to be in, and you know what you got to do to help your team succeed. Take your time, throw good quality shots at the end of the day. That's all you really want to do is throw good quality shots. That is correct. That's it. Ace Austin's up to see if he can throw a turkey here. He's an outstanding bowler. He could average 250 if he really wanted to. I think he wants to. We, we both can say that. He definitely wants to. He's, he's, he's seizing the moment. He recognizes the moment and he's, he's, he's seizing it. And we have our, our, our former Mal Williams here. You see what Ace Austin is doing, Mal? <laughs> that was just some bullshit strike. He just, he just threw nah, one through the face. It, it's struck. a strike, though, is it not? Yeah, yeah okay. Thank Ma you, Mal. Hey, Mal. Mal. It don't matter what it smell like, matter what it look like. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> Ma Mal called it bullshit, but to never feel that X up, that's all that matters. They call on Tyler with his second, with his first ball, third frame with the seven count. Out to have his opponent across from him go three in a row. Yeah, and, and sometimes even when you have eight. someone who's throwing strikes and you throw your first, you're the first person to offer a strike to throw a spare, and hopefully he picks it up, of course. But if he doesn't pick no, it up, I'm, that can call, that can put a little pressure on you. It definitely bothers you because you said to yourself, you thought you had a good look, and now your opponent still has the look. And if you thought your opponent didn't really throw it good and got 10, they put a little bit of pressure on you to make you throw a good shot for your third frame as well, yes. They go on cover the spare. Picks up the spare. Yeah, right there, the guy with two first names, Bob Bob himself, Robert Robert. Uh, he's trying to rob hopes and dreams away from Strictly Business. Secret Society is no secret that they're standing on business, but Strictly Business, they know what the assignment is. Just get one more than 21. The unique thing about Secret Society is that they've had a lot of bowlers who are injured right now, who are Troy Lent, you have a couple of players, uh, Donald Powell, a lot of guys who are not able to bowl today, but they're here in support or in spirit. So, and they have Dave Adams anchoring that pair. He imagines Dave Adams was on another pair. Oh my goodness. They, uh, Secret Society would be, would be even stronger as a team. See his hat moving in the back? <laughs> Let's see what's happening here. here. I'm out and with uh -oh. the tag based off the four face. seven nine right there. The, the face ball speed. Four, four six seven rather. Ball speed is definitely important down here to me and Bowler Bomber. Since I've been here, if you're slow with the ball, the ball just tends to go through the face. You have to maintain your speed all day. David covered seven points. You definitely have to be on your cues, your, your P's and Q's when you're bowling here. The scratch pair again, you have no room for error in my full eyes. You have no room for error when you want no, the scratch you, pair. No, you're again. telling it right, sir. Yeah, right you, now, you don't. You, yeah, he needs don't. to pick this, this spare up, even though it's early on, because you do not want Secret Side to run away from you on their scratch pair and get beat by 100 pins. Then you're looking for uh, a phone a friend or something like that to get a clue, right? Again, everybody's always been talking about SBC, SBC, this. And again, they are from my conference, they are from my area, and I know them. But I've also heard a lot about Secret Society. So uh -huh. guess what? You cannot come into this match thinking that not doing what you have to do, it's going to be an easy pushover because before you know it, you'll be a down by a lot of pins, and this match will already be, be decided. That's right. And you know, Kenny Lowe right there uh, tells everyone he doesn't plan on being low man. Starts with open, gets a spare, makes an adjustment and strikes. You gotta keep your composure as well. Only problem is is that they have an opening on, on that on that for E. So they gotta they gotta keep become aware of what's gonna happen. You don't want that bleeding to begin to get even worse. You definitely don't. You know, the difference between a deep dash and a paper cut. And right now, it, they're trying to just put a little peroxide on it. They don't want it to burn. And if it burns, it's gonna be like fire, just like that shot was thrown right there by the lefty right there. Daquan Tyler, DT, a striking in due time. He's trying to lead his team to victory. So Again, one, right now, he doesn't have any opens. Man, today. Now that, let's see what Ace Austin does. See if he can throw a four back. Ace Austin, man, right there with him all day to start. 
good off his hand. Ooh, got he got a little bit, split. Little he bit got too that little bit too far. No, he didn't follow through all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Missing at the bottom. That, that, yeah, ball, that, that ball, ball off his hand. Bottom. Right. He, he normally finishes real good. Not worried about it. Six Society is, 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 is still going to, I think, win this match. Agreed. Everybody already knows when you start these matches, you always say to yourself, you, 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 you look at the nine from both teams, and, and you say to yourself, who's going to do what? As Ant wins the trip to four pin. You always say to yourself, who's going to do what? And you yeah. look at practice, and you look at the bones, and you always say how it goes. Again, we both, the caliber of both of these teams is high. Again, we all agree. Ooh, Ace also Ace almost, almost picked up it. that. We That's all agree great. the winner of this match most likely will win the title this year, but you never know. But again, this is the match to be to be paying mo the most attention to. Kenny Lowe with a nine count with a great ball just Mr. now. Mr. Kenny Lowe, unfortunately, throws a, a nine count. You, you, what was you saying about Kenny Lowe again? Again, Kenny Lowe's, been, Kenny Lowe's one, of the, one of them. When you hear when you hear about those bowlers who's been around throwing the ball really good for years, Kenny Lowe's one of those bowlers. Everywhere bowling, doing everything, bowling on all kinds of shots. Kenny Lowe is one of those bowlers. Even though Bob Bob is going to make everybody bowl there with another strike to Secret himself. Society will definitely make you bowl whether you want to or not. They're not going to take their foot off, off the pedal until the match is over. So SBC is going to beat them. They have to beat them on, on every every time they throw the ball. Every pin counts. I mean, I think it's every match when you hear in these playoff matches, especially when you get to the Final Four, every pin counts. So you want to take your time and throw good quality shots to make sure if you don't strike, you leave yourself a makeable spare to get the total pins you can get. One thing's for sure, nobody's running away with nothing in this match. I definitely agree with that. I don't see a runaway. I see it as a dance that's going to go with a non-stop playlist. And Dave Adam leaves a 7-10 uh, split, unfortunately. It, go ahead, uh, Shonday. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Don't do not be sorry. It's, it's fast and furious out here. And like I said, it's going to be a back and forth. They're not going to miss the pocket much. All the way you miss the pockets if you're searching for a strike. Definitely he was, he was just, he found pocket. Unfortunately, he found some two unwanted house guests in the form of um, seven and big ten. Well, let's, see, let's see if Ace Austin can get back on track this next ball. Dave Adams picks up the seven pin. And in this game, even though somebody may say, well, he got a split. But it's just as important to pick up pins to increase your pin count towards the end of the match. And again, here we go again with communication. Like, your teammates will tell you, hey, that was a good shot. Don't worry about it. Bad break. Do me a favor. Make sure you get a pin. Because every pin counts in these type of matches. Every and Ace count. Austin comes back with a strike. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off the sheet and, sh and strikes the rest of the way. Again, Ace has a really, really good look on this end. The high end tends to play a little tighter. And the straighter that he plays, that, that line would definitely hold for him. So I agree with you on that part as he, well. He's so talented, he can move to his left and still make that ball come back to the pocket. If need, if need be. But the way it looks right now, he ain't got to do that no time soon. If he stays right he where he's at. You're right. Yeah, if he stays right where he's at right now, we see plenty more strikes. And Mr. Daquan, once again, throwing the strike. He's trying to stay with Ace Austin. This is going to be a shootout. This is not going to be an easy match here. Daquan Tyler represent again, SBC. One, one of, if, if I say anything about bowling today, it's in great hands as far as the future goes with today's youth bowlers. These kids are so good, man, and the way they throw the ball, and Daquan's one of them. 21 years old, he throws the ball. You would think he's been bowling forever. Shorty has been here before on this earth when it comes to bowling. And Bob Bob throws another strike. He has a turkey. Let's see if, uh, let me see, Dave Adams can get back on track. What do you think Dave has to do, or did he just have to continue to follow through? Well, as we watch uh, Mr. Winston over here, Winston Jr. Uh, and he leaves a ring, ring and temp in. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. He's, um, he, doesn't, he doesn't idolize that shot, even though he threw that idol down the lane. And unfortunately, he didn't take it out. So now Dave Adams, who said what he has to do to get back on track, uh, stay the course. You don't work the first two frames. You have to keep your eyes. Most changes are not always maximum, but they can be minimal. And it's all always about that one little, that one little piece. Let's see if he finds that missing piece here on the shot. And Dave Adams still comes back with a strike. One of the things that I, we notice in these matches is that you, whenever your opponent throws a split, 
you want to make sure that you try to capitalize on it. You do not want to uh, throw a split at the same time that your opponent does, to, which can also make a difference in terms of you, your team moving ahead in, in pin count. Yeah, exactly. Uh, similar to what we saw about, um, I want to say, fourth frame, when the leadoff bowler, um, Ace, left that split, and then they, um, Daquan jumped right on that. You see those opportunities, and if a horse stays still, jump on it and ride and see what happens. You know, and now Daquan is going to have to throw a strike here on his next ball to even match what Ace Austin did. Yeah, and it's all about decision making when going for your splits. Do you want to be the hero, or do you want to just avoid potentially getting zero? You know, sometimes going for the split is not always the best option. And not leaving the split is the best option if you want to be victorious, as did uh, from Mr. Anthony Winston just threw a uh, strike here. So let's see, let's see if we can uh, come back and, and make a difference here. So, Mike, we talked about um, Ace, his um, his little um, gastrointestinal situation, that little hiccup he had frame four, and it seems that he jumped back on. And, but also, we saw his his match, his match play situation jump on it well. Um, does Ace stay the course, or does he keep his eyes open a little more to watch for changes? The little bit I know about Ace, I'm going to say he's going to stay the course. Everybody has their hiccup moments. But the thing about the hiccup moments, you get grit, you get focused, and if your teammates are talking to you, you're focused, they're telling you, that you know, hey, that was a little hiccup, don't worry about it, get back on. And as you can see, he's right back striking. Yep. They call throws a number one. It's out. That's right. Now, good, good point there, uh, Mr. Shaw. And, but the youngster right there, the lefty, Daquan Tyler, right now from Strictly Business Cartel. And I believe you mentioned um, Daquan being one of the youth bowlers. Yeah. And, and you're right. Um, when I think of the great young lefties, I think about uh, BC Crew and uh, the son of the legend himself, Mr. De uh, um, Devin Flowers. And Ace also comes back with a double. Ace right now, back my, with a double. My question to you, gentlemen, is this. Just like in any sport, you always have it where experience can actually bring you to the win the day. I know that SBC has a lot of youth bowlers that they look very well at this point in time, but as the match goes on, transition makes a difference. Uh, being able to, your communication, never been being on this stage. I'm sure these gentlemen, by being so young, they haven't been on the stage before. And you know, as the match goes on, it's easy to start off good, but then the question becomes, how do you finish the match as the match goes further? What so, do you think about, do you think that SBC will be able to maintain their focus throughout this game? Well, Bob Bob with a seven count there. So yes, what I'll say about that is the one thing about SBC as far as me knowing them, communication is key. Yes, mm -hmm. Daquan is one of the young bowlers in our area that's throwing the ball really good, and you're right. He can come out the gate like he's doing now, he's striking, but let's just say game two, the transition, and he doesn't have it there. The way that his team is constructed, he will have teammates up here that will come over, talk to him, let, the, let him know what they're saying from the carpet, and he will make the proper adjustments. I think today's youth all need that. They cannot go up there and just start striking game one, transition comes, and then they get lost. They need the assistance from their teammates. Now, what about Mr. Anthony Winston? Is he, is he considered a young bowler? Because I don't recall seeing him on this stage before. Anthony Winston is definitely not a young bowler, but again, he's one of the quiet ones. He's one of the ones that will strike, and you never know who he's striking because he doesn't make any noise. But again, the way their team is constructed, they will definitely have people who will be there to help them. But Anthony Winston, uh, somewhat of a semi-veteran, yes. Yeah, very good. Kenny Lowe right there. Um, make, make it a little, little DJ situation and mixing. And you know, one thing about putting your youth bowlers in a situation like this is another example of something else that a team needs to win. And that's trust. You have to trust that you know you made the best decision for the situation. And it shows that they see a lot of things in this young raw talent that is Daquan Tyler by putting them in the in potentially the situation that will make or break. You know, the only true spirit that's broken is the spirit that does not try to thrive. And they're thriving and they're trusting in that young talent. Well, they're going to have to continue to bow like this and be able to make the transition as well as keep their confidence up and trust what they see. Let's see how right now it's, it's, it's a, a close match all the way through. The question becomes now, can Sikh Society get back on their strike game as they did earlier? Mm -hmm. Great point. And you hear, and you hear uh, SBC rallying, the sirens are up, and they're trying to make it a crime scene. Gunshot.
They're trying to do something here. And let's see what happens here with Mr. Adams. He converts that spare, okay. and he is all over the double wood. Makeables yet missables. Thankfully, he did not miss. That's right. That's a mother-in-law. Ace Austin's up. Let's see if he can throw a, a, tr a turkey. So they're throwing up on a seven frame right now on a scratch pair. Secret Society at 348, SBC at 326. And off Ace also throws the triple again. Again. He's a, he's a striking machine, baby. Again, when you asked me the question earlier, was Ace going to continue striking after the hiccup? And I told you, I really believe he was. You've been, I watched him in practice like we all did. Even this game, that one hiccup, we all felt it was like a little off mm -hmm. shot. But he was already really, really lined up and knew what area he needed to be in to strike. So, yeah, I got Ace throwing a lot of them today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He hit. There was a hiccup, but thankfully he's not throwing up, and he's only throwing strikes um, to make up for that. Uh, it's a Daquan Tyler throws another strike. Go ahead. Yeah, man, Daquan Tyler. Hey, anytime you interrupt me to talk about him, it, it, it's it's okay. It's okay. And, and, and they're letting Daquan know that uh, young ball, you need to you keep doing something. Shout out to my guys in Philly. For again, all my young ball. Again, I get Daquan Tyler, that 21 year old young boy, but man, he carries himself like a, a, a such an old head. He, yeah, dude, he, yeah, he loves his moments like this where he's able to talk his trash and let everybody know guess what? I meant Bob Bob with a 10, 10 pushback. Daquan loves the atmosphere. He loves mm. these big moments. Even at 21 years old, again, oh. he wants these moments for okay. himself. He wants I, these moments. I hear what you're saying. So basically, like he, he paid him full. He, he loved the game. 1,000%. He, he Daquan, loved the hustle. Daquan Tyler wants to be <laughs> here right now. Now, just to add a little extra caveat to this, one of the things that about uh, being in a match, like just being in the match is a huge thing. The other thing is you have to look at is who's Okay. Oh, he just. Uh oh, Mr. Winston. Ten like, ten 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 ten. Sometimes you can build your legacy just from being in these matches. So it, it not, it's not what you've done previously in your bowling career. It's all what matters. What you do right now. You want you have bowlers nowadays where. Again, the earlier match, it probably the crowd wasn't probably like this. It probably was a little bit, little quieter, and you felt more comfortable throwing the ball. Here in the final four, yes, you can tell it's more bowlers down here. It's louder down here. The atmosphere is different. How are you able to handle these particular situations? It's really the key in these matches. Yeah, yeah it's all about um, championship poise, and I'll definitely say that. Um, even though we saw Mr. Winston right there, uh, a dub. He, he left the ring in 10 pin. He knows he threw a good shot. I feel, for, uh, in terms of mental capacity, stay in the bet that you threw a good shot. And once again, he threw a spare. The question is, can Secret Society hold on and get back on their strike game? They need Ace Austin to lead this team, but each one of his players, each one of his teammates can actually go on a strike fest. Right now, unfortunately, looks like Mr. Winston, Mr. Dave Adams are struggling on these pairs right now. Well, right now, as you can see right now, it is a very close game. There are more strikes, even though they're behind on the side of Secret Society. No, that's SBC. Uh, SBC. Sorry about it. I'm sorry. They're both standing on business, though. And it's all about whether the person with the most strikes on the opposite side decides to stop. If they keep going, then there's an opportunity. Opportunities are always presented. And as a team, you do not want to get begin to get blown out. You want, you want to take your time and throw quality shots no matter what the score is. Just to maintain getting pin count. Kenny knows the student wanted to, to give him a three-bagger. Going to the eighth frame right now, Secret Society is up 416 to SBC's 405 on a scratch pair. Again, it's all about focus, being able to stay focused on good quality shots. This is a lot of pressure on certain people. It, it, it always goes to show where you are. They call on Tyler with 10 more. Miss it always goes to show how you really are in these big pressure that's moments. That's right, that's right, because pressure burst pipes here. So now Mr. Daquan Tyler just threw another strike. He has five in a row going into the ninth frame. Ace also has three in a row going into the eighth frame. He's up to throw this ball. Yeah, he's throwing it like an Afro saying. He's getting stronger with each shot. I, I think I see his hair turning gold. Daquan's going to feed off the crowd. Daquan's going to make sure the crowd feeds off him. But Ace is right there with him, still throwing the ball really, really, really good. Ooh. Ace also with a seven count. 
you can always tell when, it, when a person doesn't follow through all the way that how it makes out what it makes the ball do at the end. Exactly. Mr. Winston comes back with a strike. He's been he's been struggling this match, but he has four strikes now in this in this match. And again, it's all about your team, man. As you can see, his teammates are right there, ready for him, coming off the lane, either throwing that strike. All you want to do when your teammates are not throwing it, let's just say good or getting strikes, is stay behind them, motivate them, keep them into the game. You don't want them to get lose focus and get so discombobulated with themselves that they're thinking too much when they go there throw the ball. Now, the thing is with, with Ace Austin getting that seven count, the unique thing here is that these te their, their team is beginning to, they need to start striking more because SBC is looking to come on board now. Now, their anchor man uh, just threw four in a row. So now, SBC to me has the momentum going into the ninth frame. I really, I, like I said earlier, Kino has been in these situations before. He already knows. So I think he's anchored for a reason on this pair to be able to keep Aunt Winston and Daquan Tyler focused to know what they got to do for him to make sure that they win this match. Yeah, and Bob Bob Moran comes back with a double. That's an important double right here. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to have strong legs and hold your peoples up in times of distress. You know, you don't want to watch your friend get stomped out. You want to be able to jump in. If they right now they ain't got the hands, hopefully you got the feet. And if they ain't got the feet, hopefully you got the hands. You got to be able to compete your team's um, um, downsides. And you cannot have a downside. Bob, Bob Moran with a much needed double uh, to make up for that seven pin. That, that seven count that happened hurt into the pin count, being that um, they were on more than one strike. That double by Bob Bob says, hey, I got your back. Try not to fall on your back. Again, the same way I was talking about SBC's communication, I expect you society had the same thing. It needs to be somebody on your team that's either bowling or on the carpet, making sure everybody's focused and still staying with the game plan to make sure they do what they gotta do as far as the game goes. You never wanna get out of the game to the point you feel as though a seven count might have just like made a, a distraction for as far as the team go. Stay focused, throw good quality shots. Now this is a foundation frame. Let's see what Ace Austin does here. He follows through against the strike. Very good. You can tell he made an adjustment off the last one because that yeah. ball got a little bit more right and he stayed behind that ball. Yes, he you did. said you said earlier, you saw you can tell when the ball leaves his hand what it's gonna do when it get down lane. Yeah. He stayed down with that one, followed through all the way through. Great, really good shot. He's locked in the shot. Now this is even though he's also struck, he's gonna need uh, uh, SBC is gonna need Daquan to throw another strike here. Less they they give secret side momentum going into the last frame. <laughs> Well, the question now is, who's going to finish this game strong? This is a close matchup. No, nobody's giving anything. Mr. Winston, with the ringing 10 pin, you need this frame as a foundational frame going into the 10th frame to give yourself a chance in terms of scoring-wise. When we started earlier, we all said spins make a huge difference. Yes, Aunt Winston has the ball getting to the pocket. He's leaving a couple 10 pins, but he's making them. At the same token, his teammates at some point needs to come to him and say, hey, maybe we got to make some kind of adjustment because at this rate, you're going to keep leaving 10 pins, getting the ball into the pocket like that. That's correct. And now Bob Bob on a triple it is, as he threw his ball, Secret Society is making a, a push for this last and final frame. The question is, can they close it out? Dave Adams is, is not struggling, but he, he's not at his very best at the moment. Definitely, so he's going to have to double up here. Definitely a great shot by Bob Bob to count 30 going to the 10th frame because you need it. Even though Daquan's counting 30 going in too, Secret Society right now needs every possible pin count they can get going to the 10th frame. Yes, they need to be able to go. And Dave Adams gets a ring 10 pin. That's not a ring in endorsement here. Mm -hmm. Speak, speaking of uh, endorsements and honorable oh, mentions, Chris Tremaine. Uh, just shot 300 for Trainwreck, who has been um, running through competition and had a little Shout bit of foresight. Train wreck, man. Train wreck. Yeah, have a little foresight. One of these teams, should they win, they have to look at um, the seemingly hot and almost unstoppable train wreck this, this playoffs. Um, you got to be also keeping a little eye on your peripheral over what's the next team. And Mr. Kenny Lowe throws another strike. He has five in a row going into the 10th frame. So it looks like uh, Bob Bob Moran is the only one that had, can potentially get uh, at 30 the first, first frame, first ball he throws in the 10th frame. So let's see what happens here. Definitely a big ball by Kennedy to help SBC get a little bit of advantage going to the 10th frame. Definitely a big shot. 
Going to the 10th frame right now, we have SBC at 565. Secret Society at 553. Going into the 10th frame. Those, those people, people who come into this 10th frame with trios can make the world of a difference in terms of the final score, so. Like, like I said, we were talking earlier, here's a pressure moment. Yes, Daquan Ty has been throwing them all day, but again, at 21 years old, you are in the 10th frame of game one of the final four. I'm thinking that he's like a uh, uh, Deion Sanders, has no fear, just playing. Oh, seven pass. Ace great, Austin got robbed ball, on that great ball. Great ball by Ace, that seven pass ain't fall. But again, Daquan Tyler, man, today's you. I love you all. You all are so involved in bowling. Y'all giving it y'all all. The sport is in great hands with these youth bowlers. And Daquan Tyler right now is one of those bowlers. Let's see if he throws a strike here. If he throws a strike here, he's going to lead his team to victory on the scratch period. It's ten. hard to be a, le be a lefty. Man, er er everybody know how it is to be a lefty. And if they want time to get 10 of them back there for the Rocky first ball in the tenth. Ace covered his space, so we got Ace coming up on this field ball here in the 10th frame. And Daquan Tyler throwing his second ball in the 10th on 277 pace. And Daquan. Mr. Hampton here. Mr. Bad A count by Daquan Tyler. But he still can finish with a 265. Still throw a great game. Not bad as for, for first game out the gate. It kind of like sets the tone for you and your teammates. As but a it, team, you want to be able to get as many pins as you can for totals across the board. Ace Austin finished his shot, goes out with a 222. At the, at the end of the day, we all, again, at the beginning, we said total pins count. Because, yes, at this rate, it looks like SBC will win game one. But you never know how I can go game two. Daquan Tyler had an okay look, and Kenny Lowe on the bottom was six in a row. But you just never know. It can go away in a heartbeat. And it, within that heartbeat, Secret Society can then pick up their pace. Yes, the, both teams are very talented, which means that you cannot take anybody for granted as you continue to bowl. In any circumstance, I think you always want to keep your foot on the gas to make sure you finish the job. Because every team, especially Secret Society, is going to fight until their bowling shoes come off. Everybody knows that. And Bob Bob throws his first ball here in the 10th frame. There's a strike. As a four-bagger. Like we just said, all pants count. That's a big shot by Bob That is correct. Even if you lose pants. the match, even if you lose that game, you still want to finish as many pins as you can you because you never know what your guy going to do. Winston throws a, oh, he throws a split here. Baby that, split for and for West. That ball was way inside. The ball never got right. He looked like he was tentative as he was approaching the line. A lot tentative. Everybody knows in this building, if you miss the ball inside, if the ball's going to either check or go through the face. The key in bowling around is to get the ball to the right. Worst case scenario, you'll leave a 10 pin. But if you don't get it right, you'll leave what Aunt Winston just left. Yes, he left a baby split. Now, the it's question the is, will he pick it up? If he does not pick it up, this could change the, compl the complexity of this match right now. It'll give Secret Society momentum and negate. Bob Bob throws another strike there. That's an important strike to get 20 points there. Big shot Bob Bob can get a, only another 10. If Winston doesn't pick this pick this baby spare up, he got 287. It's a great shot by Bob Bob if, again. If, two, if uh, Winston doesn't pick this spare up, he chops it. He gives Secret Side an opportunity to steal this first game. And he just chopped it. He just went top. He didn't follow through. He put his hand down. One of the things that people don't realize is you can throw that ball. Remember we talked about the moment being bigger for the young fellas. As opposed to Mr. Daquan throwing his ball, he almost struck out. Unfortunately, Winston left a split, and now he, he chopped the, the, the t he left with, left it, uh, what's that, the six pin? The, the six, so what he does is make Kenny Lowe have and to And Bob goes out with four, with three strikes in the tenth. So Bob Bob ends with a 257. Ace Austin goes out with a 222. Let's see with Dave Al, how he ends the match. Again, Bob Bob, with, a, with that great finish, allows Secret Society to have a small chance to win this match. It all depends on what Kenny Lowe does right now, because right now, Secret Society is up. 13 pins with Kenny Lowe counting 30 if he throws the first. This is a poor match ball for Kenny Lowe. 
He goes with strike there. He Can't has help. to throw another strike to make sure that they win the match. Never like throwing that first one to get him out the way, but Dave also can throw the first one here. This game is not over. It's not over. It's definitely not over. If Dave Adams throws the strike there, she can side only down by three pins. Absolutely. And that's it. Dave Adams came a little bit high, but again, the most important part of this game for Secret Society, even if you could not catch them SPC to win the match, you want to get as many pins as possible and cut the deficit down. Because again, total pins always matters in these matches. Yes, always. It, it's, exactly, because you want to win your pair. Two points for each game that you win for your team, four points for totals on your pair, as well as 10 points on, uh, with the cumulative uh, points across the board. You get 10 pins. So again, you, you, you tell your teammates, no matter how you finish, no matter how you're bowling, take your time and get the maximum amount of pins you can get me. So if you can finish out for a 207 or a 277, go get it. Because guess what? When this match is over, two, anywhere between two to 10 pins can cost you total pins, which is 10 points, and that will cost you the match. All right. And Mr. Lowe went out for another strike here. Mr. Lowe just put the finishing touches on the match uh, for the for the scratch pair. So that would definitely give SPC game one on a scratch pair. So at the end of this match, if Kenny Lowe throws one more strike, they'll be up by 12 pins. But that's provided that Dave Adams writes the shit and throws a strike here. So if it was me, if I was Dave in Dave Adams' shoes, I would pick a different ball just to see what kind of reaction I would get from this no, ball. Nothing like, a field, no, no, nothing like a field shot to possibly get a different look, but at the same token, as your team bowled and to he, lose by 12 pins, that's you, not bad. That's not bad, that's not considering bad. it could have been a lot worse. So the question, so the question becomes. So I got a question for you. Go ahead, sir. So yes, SBC wins this match. Daquan Tyler going 65, Kenny Lowe going 47, but Ant Winston went 178. If this was your team, do your do your team have a conversation about actually subbing Ant Winston, or do your team continue going with Daquan and Kenny the way they bowl? Being as though his average is 242, that would signify to me that he has experience in, in making adjustments in the game. I personally think that they need to be start talking to him about, look, you have one, two, three, four, uh, nine counts in that match. You have two splits the other time. The question becomes, can you make, can you, do you need to necessarily make a ball change with the lane condition change now, and, and you throw a split in the 10th frame. Yes. Yeah. So for me, I wouldn't even think about, because he looks like he's been throwing the ball good, he just has to gain his focus back and say to himself, look, I can throw this ball. This is not nothing new to me. Let me just calm down, get the right ball in my hand, and make the small adjustment, move to my left, maybe two board, two or three boards, depending on what, and throw your ball. He's not throwing the ball with authority. So again, all that I heard you just say involves communication. Right. Letting your teammates, letting you know that, guess what? Here's a little slight adjustments you might have to make to help you with the transition. Yes, you shot 170, but we know what you're capable of. So guess what? From back here, this is what we see. Let's make a few adjustments, and let's go from there. Now, on Six Society side, Dave Adams shot a 193. He carries a 236 average. I would do, give the same communication to him. Now, the thing with Dave Adams is it looks like he, he might be laboring a little bit, and, not, and he looks like he's not playing with energy in the match. I'm going to always say communication to me is key. I think we all have enough bowling talent to do what we have to do while we're on the lanes. But we need teammates to make sure they are communicating with each other and doing what they got to do on the lanes. We're going down to two. One. We're going to do the handicap one. Handicap one. Looks like here, looks like uh, SBC is winning on this pair thus far. Looks like uh, you're now tuned in to handicap Bell, one. If he Marcus Bell can throw one more strike, Marcus Bell with ten. So on handicap one, SBC take game one on handicap one with Tiffany Bell shooting two oh one, the Hall of Famer Chris Johnson shooting two twenty six. And Marcus Bell shooting 258. 
now on for Seek Society. Looks like Dave Nigerian finally got it together. He shot a 210, but we didn't see the rest of the match. But it looks like Mike Taylor needs to get it together in the second game. He shot a 193, but I'm sure he can bring it back together. Like I said, Mike is one of those bowlers too as well that will find it, needs, the needs to make the proper adjustments to make sure this team is okay. It's all about adjustments after when, you, when you're doing this because you can have a great line in game one, let's just say seven frames, but when you get to that eighth frame, the transition has hit, and then you got to make the proper adjustments to keep continue scoring for your team. Exactly, and then what happens is in this final game, in this next game here, what you're going to see between Dave Knight, Dave Knight struggled. He came, he started the game off with a 210, with Leon Stone leading that pair with 234, and Mike Taylor shot a 190. I thought he thought he shot a 193. Yeah, he did. He'd be 192. 192. No, no, on the middle pair. He shot 192. No, he shot 193. I thought it was 193. It was 193. He had 172. No, it's 193. I thought it was three. It was 193. We ain't gonna. We, we no, no, Andrew was over here. Trust me, it was 193. Have them check it out. That's all. Have them check it out. Yeah, have them check it out. But it was 193. So we got a nine pin and a seven pin here. David Knight Jr. with first ball, and game number two, we go seven pin spare. Now, the unique thing here with uh, uh, Dave Knight is that he's a lefty, just like uh, Mr. Tyler, but he's, he's struggling a little bit because I don't think he's following through on the, on the shot, or it could be the ball. I always feel as though with lefties, by you being over there by yourself, it's you. So even though no matter what ball you're doing, throwing, if that ball is striking, you still might, it still could be the wrong ball for you to the point come game two or even a transition that's not to break down too much for you. Whereas the ball you threw in the beginning might have been too much of a bowling ball for you in the early stages. And Leon Stone leads a ringing 10 pin. Good, the ball is really good off his hand. Though. Yes, really, he's really throwing good. a, a the old ball, so the definitely, purple item. So definitely was, was, so definitely was a 192 for, for Leon Stone in game number one. Got the Hall of Famer Chris Johnson up. Who throws 10 back to SBC in game number two in the first frame for CJ Chris Johnson? Name 50 strikes. Go ahead. And this is early on. This is a big uh, pickup. If he, he and Leon Stone needs to pick up the 10 pin, he generally picks it up every time he throws, but you can never take anything for granted. Now the 10 pin, 10 spare made there, but again. Even with SBC winning the first game here on Handicap 1, Secret Society is still tough. You can't take that for granted. You have to stay focused if you ask me. I'll, you'll hear people say keep your foot on the gas to make sure you continue doing what you're doing. I think it's more of a focus factor because Secret Society is not one of these pushover teams that you're just going to run over. Exactly. You're either going to have to bring it or you stay home. And Michael Taylor right there starts off game number two with a strike here in the first frame. Marcus Bell will be the anchor bowler here on handicap one for SBC. Marcus Bell shot real good the first game. Question is, can he and the, and the second bowler continue on and lead his team on to victory? It's nothing like trying your best to stay focused and stay within the realm of what you did game one. Again, transition gets us all as bowlers. If you're able to catch the transition and make the proper adjustments early, you will continue throwing the ball good as Marcus Bell throws the first one here in game number two in the first round. It's going to be a big question is, can you keep it up? Again, that's the most important part. Like, you say to yourself, you can see it and it looks good, but by game, by um, frame number four, as Tech Bell comes in a little high for a nine count, by frame four, the trans transition might hit and that shot you've been throwing all day might even... Uh, fan out on you and don't move or it might check too much now here comes the adjustments how are you in the adjustment moments that is correct let's see Dave Dave Adams Dave uh, Knight needs to begin to start making a string of strikes he needs to start showing why he's one of the best lefties in the game <laughs> but what he did right there he caught me off guard he went and got a pin on the gutter <laughs> I don't know what was happening but again you are absolutely right Dave, Dave throws it good from that side everybody has their beliefs about lefties, but Dave's different if you ask me. Yes. Stays behind the ball really good, rolls the ball really good, don't leave too many corner pins. Throws the ball really good. Jeff Bell covers the spare hand frame number two. 
And just NBC. so you, everybody knows, he's going up against a three-time Rodman champion from TNBA, Miss Tiffany Bell. She's no slouch herself. She's an awesome, consistent, strong bowler. And she's making her, she's continuing her legacy in bowling period in this in, match. Any, any event in this building, and Tiffany Bell is on anybody's roster, she's definitely bowling. Like you said, one of the awesome female bowlers in this building, period. Awesome bowler, period. Super Dang. Dave ain't bowling super right now. Ball hey, we have, we have a correction on that on that thing. It is 192 for the end of that. Oh, 193? No, I'm talking about the middle pair. Yeah, it was this 192. Okay, 192. Okay. Yeah, so uh, as you all are watching right now, the Hall of Famer, Chris Johnson, up frame number two for strike game number one with the SBC. Tiffany Bell shot 201. Chris Johnson shot 226. Marcus Bell shot 258. 685 scratch with their pins, they shot 710. David Knight shot 210. Leon Stone shot 234. Michael Taylor shot 192. 636. With, they shot 650. They got a little bit of ground to make up, but again, in secret society, don't get it twisted. This is what they do. They can definitely make this up in no time. Six societies down on 60 pins on the uh, first scene handicap. So, we got Leon Stone up now. He left the champion in the first frame. He threw it really good. Let's see if he make any adjustments. Leon Stone with the ball. He throws another strike. Great adjustment. Like I said, yeah. he left the champion the first time. I think he might have switched bowling balls, but the angle was No, he's different. still throwing the same purple what, what, idol. But the angle was definitely different yes. for that ball, and you can tell by the way the ball hit the pocket. Yes, that's true. The one thing about Leon Stone, he can play any shot, any, any, any mark and still get the ball to do what he needs it to do. Nothing like the versatile bowler being able on your team. Those are the ones you really want to have because you never know what you're going to run into no matter where you are and what you're bowling on. Nothing like the versatile bowler. And on this pair, he's more of the glue than the, he could, he could be an anchor man on any team, but on the, on season side, he's the glue on this pair in the first team handicap. Mike Taylor comes back with a strike as well. So now Secret Society is trying to right the ship here. They lost by 60 in the first game on the first team handicap. The question is, can they make up, can they win this, this, this second game as well as uh, in addition to winning the second game, they need to also uh, chop away at, at the total wood, which is 60 right now. And again, knowing what you lost the first game by, again, you just want to stay focused and throw good quality shots. Marcus Bell throws the strike in frame number two for a double. All you want to do is stay focused. You don't want to let the match or the game on your pair get out of hand, whereas now you're reaching or you're trying to do too much. You take your time, you throw good quality shots, the scoreboard will take care of itself. Now, I'm going to say this here. Sometimes the moment can be bigger than you if you allow the crowd noise to get to you. We both know at this at this level in, in the playoffs, the, the crowd is gonna be the the, the the extra player in the in the game. They're gonna be trying to make all kind of noise to break the concentration of the bowler of the opposite team. It's definitely loud here. SBC, Secret Society, everybody's cheering for their teams. But again, do you have the mental strength to be able to be up on the approach, stay focused, and throw a good quality shot. Because you could be lined up, get ready to throw your ball, and somebody can strike on another pair, and the crowd gets loud. Does that bother you, or are you able to follow through and still throw a good quality shot? Yes, can you maintain your focus one shot at a time? Because that's what that's all that's going to matter at this point. They might throw the ball, and these are seven count. A little bit fast. Like he, seems not, he does not seem to be locked into the match. Tiffany Bell, on the other hand, is leaving, ringing. She's leaving both almost as if she's playing no tap. And as you know, Spares win games here. Again, in practice, we discussed the principle of making sure you make Spares because you just never know how it could be at the end when it's all said and done. Everybody, all of us as bowlers want to strike. But when you don't when you don't have it or you don't see it yet and your teammates are talking to you, trying to get you to that point, make your spares. Now, Most I'm important a, point. I'm going to say this here. There were a lot of teams that were in the playoffs last year that were out by this time. Last year, SBC got knocked out in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, you know, in the top eight. This year, they're making it to this final four. 
and looks like right now, unfortunately, to the detriment of Sikh society, they're, they're making a statement this year. And, and once again, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to bowl and who's going to uh, make a difference in the in the next round if SBC goes on. Everybody has moments, no matter where it is throughout the season, that when they get to this point, they have that moment of trying to prove themselves. The doubters, the people that talked about them throughout the season when they were bowling bad, they get here and they want to remind everybody how good they really are. SBCs are one of those teams, definitely. Yeah, SBC, SBC is definitely one of those teams. And what proves it is the fact that they now hold a 223-pin overall lead on Secret Society. And to do that against Secret Society is huge. And in the playoffs at this point, you cannot allow a team to jump up on you like a bad rash and you think you're going to get it off immediately. It's just not going to happen. You tell yourself, no matter what the pin count looks like, like, even though that's bad after game one, but what you really want to do is keep your team focused. Tell your team, hey, let's stay within the game. We know what we got to do. Let's throw good quality shots. And again, bowling going to be bowling. You can't control what the other team does, but what you can control is what your team does. But you as you know, that when a team is beginning to put a string of strikes against you, and all you're either putting together is spares or, or splits, that's a problem. It deflates that, you. It deflates it, you. It, it de changes your focus in the match. And then you begin to grab the, the bowling ball too too much, and you make even more, more mistakes. It definitely, it definitely causes you to squeeze a little bit more. It also causes your, your carpet, your teammates, your, your gallery to get a little quiet. And if you allow the other team to get louder and they're still striking, it definitely puts a damper on your chance of trying to move on. That is true because then you begin to see the handwriting on the wall. <laughs> we got Marcus Bell up right now on a double in the third frame. The SBC. And leaves a ring and 10 pin. All oh, like a little bit too far to the right. I mean, again, we all know the ball, the, the lanes are moving and hooking, but you still have to make sure you stay behind Let's the ball. Let's see if Mike Taylor can play. He leaves a ring in 10 Again, pin. like I said, the way it looks, everybody makes sure they get the ball to the right, but it's all about making sure that the ball starts to roll and get down the lane. Well, I'm not saying that Sikh society is in trouble, but what I'm saying is they need to start revving that train up if they're going to do something. So, so actually, look, look here, look at the numbers. This is pretty much a scratch match. Handicap one, SBC getting 25 pins, Secret Society getting uh, 14 pins. Handicap two, Secret Society is getting 27 pins, SBC is getting 10 pins. Almost like a scratch match, actually. It looks like a scratch match, just a matter of who makes a mistake, either throwing a spare or who throws more strikes than another team. We all know how, it, how, how you get when you're getting the ball to the hole and you're tapping, not turning your head, maybe an eight or nine pin here. The key is staying focused, covering your spares, staying in the match. Don't let the match get bigger than you. Once the match gets bigger than you, it then becomes a problem and you can hurt your team. Well, it's going to take a, a, a concerted team effort in order to make it so that you can actually close these frames. Secret Side has to put a, begin to put a string of strikes together in order, and then in order to stay in the match. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can actually finish it. I'm not saying that they can't do it, but they need to get it started right now. And SBC has to actually find a problem. They looks like they don't have any problem with transition right now. Tim Bell leaves a nap, the star friend number four here on Handicap 1. Their handicap are at 201. Secret Society with their handicap is at 168. And there's also a correction on that 297 is actually a 287 um, for for uh, Dan Bright. Uh, so instead of 223, it is 213, but still in favor of SBC. Thank you, Sean Dyke, for that correction, sir. Let's see if Dave Knight can get a strike here. He needs to start doing something. That, even though he got a strike, that didn't look that pretty. He looks like he's still not comfortable throwing anything right now. So I'm not sure exactly what the carpet looks like for Secret Society. But when you throw a strike like that, you kind of like want to hear your crowd cheering. Again, it's nothing like having an energy from your team in the background. Maybe they don't have, they don't have many people here. Maybe this is how they are. But we all know Secret Society is not going to give up until their bonus shoes come off. Yeah, you're right. And you mentioned all the noise. But we all know the loudest noise can be silence. And you want the silence to come from your opposing side, not on your side. And right now, things are on the side of, um, of Handicap Pair 1. S yeah, Handicap Pair 1 for SBC. They started off beating them by 60 pins, uh, 710.
to 650. And you, what you want is to keep that advantage. You don't want to give anything back if you're SBC. It's not, it's not for like staying focused, keeping your foot on the gas, but at the same token, you still steady yourselves. The match is not over. We got still do good quality shots to make sure we get to the finish line. Never get too far ahead of yourself to thinking that you already had the match won. That is correct. But the moment that you begin to relax, that's when the other team begins to get an opportunity to focus. Because once again, spares keep you in the game. The strikes allow you to forge ahead. Right now, uh, Mr. Chris Johnson, a Hall of Famer, is uh, on a four-bagger. Let's see if uh, Mr. Marcus Bell can get back on the strike game. This, this match is still close. Nobody on these two, on the first team handicap, has made a mistake when it comes to leaving up an open frame. So you might get spares. That still keeps you in the game. Unfortunately, Leon did stone that last that last leave. Um, but right now, he, he, if he wants to um, forget about the stone and he wants to keep rolling and keep smoking, hopefully he'll be smoking on a pack that has the letters SBC on it. It's, to me, again, I think Secret Society is one of those things you cannot just play with. Like, you really, really have to make sure you still execute it as SBC because slowly but surely we get 10 right there. You can get Secret Society to be right back in this game in, in a heartbeat. And, uh, again, the caliber of team they are, you don't want to give them that possible momentum to get back into this match. Hey, I definitely agree with that. And, you know, uh, the brain himself always say, um, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to transition, transition, transition. You're someone that's always thinking on the lanes. And one thing you have to always keep in mind is that the name Bell rings bells when it comes to the DMV. If you don't know Bell, then you ain't in the bowling alley. If you're in the DMV or in most parts of the north, Marcus that is true. Marcus Bell is that guy. The, the name, the name rings out. I don't care where he's at, where he's bowling. When you hear the name Marcus Bell, people be like, "Oh yeah, Marcus Bell." They know it. Tiff Bell with a 10 panel here. Marcus and Tiffany Bell, those are two household names. Yes. And, and she's and, still playing uh, no tap right now, but I know she can make a, a difference as the game, as the match goes on. Yeah, yeah, they, I call them double Bs. That's the Bell bloodline. And if, you, and if you already know what it is, when the bell rings and it's go time, you already know it's going to be show time. And it's definitely show time right now with both of these teams. Both teams throwing haymakers. Reminisce of Rocky IV, no blocking, a whole lot of swelling. Yeah, this, this match, unfortunately, is not looking too good for uh, Secret Society. You, you have to be able to put together a string of strikes, and you have to be able to weather the storm when the other team is stringing strikes. Again, you, you try to tell yourself to tell your team to stay focused, stay within it, but when you're sitting here and you're watching all these strikes and the, 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 the score is getting away and away from your team, kind of like demoralizes you a little bit. It takes a little bit of toll on you to the point you change yourself, is this it for us or what more can we do if SBC is doing this? Again, you still just want to stay focused, stay within the match. Me, you, it, it's never over until your bonus shoes come off. I don't care what the score looks like. Yeah, no, no, no DNF here. Yeah, yeah you can't. And you know, have you ever seen a DNF during the playoffs? No, we haven't. So, at this point, Dave Adams needs, I mean, Dave Knight needs to make another strike here. He needs to strike at least three, four in a row. He's the leadoff man. He sets the tone for his team. That's the best strike that I see him throw already today. That was a big shot. Again, it's all. If this, is, this is momentum based. You want to be able to get any kind of momentum you can get for your team. If you're throwing a strike to lead off the fifth frame, your second bowler might look at you and be like, you know what? Here's my turn. Let me get a strike because you know what? We're not out this match yet. We still have a chance. And that's all you want at the end of the day is a chance. That's right. And your leadoff man sets the energy tone as well as. Uh, the this, this score, he sets the table for your team. So if he's not striking, it does put a little bit more pressure, a little bit by little bit, on each man following. Because following that leadoff, you said to yourself, well, my leadoff might have got a spare or he might have opened, but he didn't get a strike. So here's my turn. Let me make sure I hold him up to do my job as I'm following the leadoff on And you're right. That, big, that, that can't at some point become too much pressure when you look at the bottom score in the right-hand corner and you're trailing. Mm -hmm. It can. Uh, indeed, and we just saw a factory reset by Leon Stone. A very smart move. If there's something that doesn't feel right, then it must not be right. So you got to step back and get right.
and let's just see what happens right here. Um, this should be a very makeable spare conversion for the lefty, and he walks right to the spare. Now, let's see what that reset does for Leon Stone. Yes, Leon needs a strike here because he's been getting a lot of nine counts. He only has one strike in the game thus far, and he needs to get a strike. He leaves a ring in 10 pin. I, I know that has to be frustrating, but he has to maintain his focus no matter what because you always want to give yourself an opportunity to help your team to win. They're not that far behind. They're a little bit behind almost by 50 or 60 sticks. But the question is, can they regroup and do what they need to do? Again, we always say as bowlers, we know what our equipment does. We're on the land and we see what's happening. But again, the key word today to me is going to be communication. Your teammates will go up there and they will let Leon know, hey, the last two, three shots are getting to the pocket, but you're not carrying the tamp in. What kind of adjustments are you about to make? Because what I cannot have you do is continuously throw that good shot for the rest of the game and not carry the tamp in. We have to make adjustments to carry the tamp in. And this is where knowing your equipment and getting your yes. equipment prepared yes. before the match, yes. you want to know if, you, if your balls were, your bowling balls were baked or, or did you get them resurfaced? You know, what did you clean your ball with? When was the last time, you know, what can your ball do? Some people leave lane shine on their ball, and then when you get on lanes that are conditioned where the, there's a, a little bit heavier oil than normal, your ball's not gonna perform like you normally would. And, and if I could point to that, you know, a good strategy a lot of times is um, keeping three of the same surfaces, but keeping them fresh from game to game. Because it's not always at the lane change. As you pick things up, things stay with you. That be a little bit of that Crisco. Absolutely. And, and you know what? Every every different batch of chicken that you fry has a different has a different feel. So a lot of times you keep your pieces fresh. You will keep your meal fresh. Yes, but it also goes to knowing your equipment. Which what's the cover stock? What's the uh, how your ball is tilted, the axis radius, and all that stuff. All that stuff is important when you start talking about continuing to make make right choices in the game. So again, I'm one of those bowlers. I don't know all of that stuff. Thus, I have teammates that will help me in those particular situations. So again, not knowing what SBC or Secret Society has as far as on the lane right now with their nine bowlers for each team, you also want to make sure you have that one person that's in that ear to let them know, hey, yeah, that might be the right ball if they get into the pocket but it's not carrying. So guess what? How about if we try this or pick up this or move this way? You need that kind of communication for your team on the lane. Also, too, you have to be able to see, okay, this is the second time these lanes have been have been oiled. You have to anticipate that maybe, just maybe, if the ball is going to go longer than the first, the first time because maybe they didn't strip the lanes. Of course, I'm not saying that they do that here at, Bola, at Bolarama, but what I'm saying is you have to anticipate what kind of ball do you think would work better if for the second time a, a ball has, the lanes have been uh, re-oiled. You have to be prepared for whatever is up there. You find that out in practice. But again, that's why your people come from on the carpet. When we, when we are on the lanes bowling, of course we can't see what the people see behind us. So if they're giving us whatever kind of advice, letting us know what they see, we can use it to assist us on the lane to help us as far as we want to go to Curry Tiffins. Yes, and he has he, he has at least four nine counts. And, and once again, Tiffany Bell throws another uh, uh, nine count and leaves a ring in 10 pin. So now if I was her teammate, I would say, hey, look, either you might consider moving back six inches, getting a ball that starts up a little bit earlier, and then go from here. Now we have Dave Knight coming up to see if he can get a, a, a turkey here. It's important that he throws a strike here, being as though uh, SBC already won the first game. And, yeah, exactly. And now what you're doing is you're fighting. You're fighting off your back here. I mean, you still throw upward punches. You just want to land the right punch at the right time. So when it's this close, when both teams are closing frames for the most part, you always wonder, all right, if I stay the course, will they let me in? A lot of times, all you need is a little bit of um, a little bit of of, a, of, a, of an oil slip, if you will. All you need is just those two frames of light, just to see what potential change. Yes, and Tiffany Bell picks up a 10 pin, which normally in a vet, in a tight match. That can cause a lot of pressure for you. She's a seasoned veteran. She's been there before. All day, every day. But you also said to yourself, granted, even if you're getting the ball to the pocket and you're not carrying it, you want to cover your spares. Because if you're, if, as SBC in this case, 
win it right now, Spares are going to win. If you're watching the other team tap in the same way you're tapping in that carrying, if you make your spares, they make their spares, and you're already winning, that means you stay in front. That's the most, this, again, uh, like we said in, in the practice, spares are going to be key to that. It looks like here, when, uh, when you are, now let's see, let's see here. This is going to be an important match, uh, important shot for Chris Johnson to get back on his strike game. Looks like he does that. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. Definitely one of them. And we're going to need Leon Stone to either switch balls or move back or follow through with a little bit more aggressiveness to get more reps on his ball because he's going to have to do something. I saw Leon talking with his teammates, so hopefully within that conversation there was a, a talk of a, some kind of adjustment. Again, he's in the hole, throwing the ball really good, just not getting the breaks to carry the 10 pin. If Hold it was me, I would tell him to move to his right Absolutely. just a little bit. Exactly. Very, 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 very. Yeah, and a lot of times when we do the, make the right adjustments, like you just pointed out, it's all about really continuing to do the right thing. Uh, sometimes, even when we change balls, and I was having a conversation out, out, out with the, some of the bowlers, you can make the right change, but sometimes when we don't trust the change you make, we overcompensate for that. So now it's a, it's a matter of concentration versus overcompensation. Let's see what happens here on this shot. And he throws the strike. Look like he smooths it up. He threw that one really good. Looked like he got the ball a little bit more to the right. It wasn't as fast as the other. You can mm -hmm. see the ball rolling off his hand Indeed. to help him turn the tip. Uh, and he followed through all the way. Hey, man. Hey, man. Since they're having a brain, if you don't use it, that's why we use we, we use over here Mr. Malachi Moore. Thank you, sir. With 10 out of them. And all it, takes, I'm not bowling, though. all it takes is one of your teammates to say, hey, Follow through. You're getting the ball to the on your line, on your mouth where you want to get the ball to, but you're not following through. A little follow through will help you carry the tempo. It'd be the little things. Can you explain follow through just to the audience, please? All right, so me, when I'm talking, when I'm bowling, again, I'm not one of those bowlers who know all the technical support. I don't really know that. But I'm a good listener. My teammates will tell me when the ball comes off your hand and the, and the follow through, your arm does not come all the way through the shot, all the way to the top of your forehead. You just drop the ball and the ball pushed off your hand. Yes, it might look good going down the lane. It might look good getting to the pocket. But if you didn't give it no hand at the bottom and follow through the ball, mm -hmm. you see the ball actually start to roll down the lane to gather more energy, it will help you carry the tempo. Exactly. Thank you for that for that explanation, sir. Yeah, in a nutshell, know the game, but know yourself better. Again, I, I, I'm one of those, I don't really know it, but I'm a great listener. I bowl with people who know this. And again, 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 we talked about communication. It's so key, man. It is so key in these matches. And Tiffany Bell with her first strike in the seventh frame. And as, so, we just, as we just said, as far as rolling the ball, she made a ball that she switched on the ball, and that ball got down a lot earlier, and that ball rolled down the lane. And you saw the difference in current attack in or not. But her follow-through was excellent towards the end of the uh, towards the end. So she her ball got more reaction on the back. End. Absolutely. Again, let's see if Dave Knight can do do the same thing. He needs to strike the rest of the way out in order to make a difference and point for a secret society. And he does. So again, he, so like we said, Dave is the leadoff. Secret Society is still in this match here on Handicap 1. This match is not decided yet. It's all about making sure you execute. Like we said, coming from that leadoff bowler, now the second bowler can say to himself, my leadoff bowler strike, we now have a chance. We're still in this match. That's all you really want. Well, let's see if Mr. Chris Johnson can give us a double here. Man, the hard, the hard, the, Along with Mr. Leon Stone. They both need this. Both teams, both bowlers need the strike. You do not want to give a window of opportunity to either team. And that's all right now. Either team wants a smidget of opportunity. And my, uh, Mr. Johnson, Chris Johnson, the Hall of Famer, throws a double after throwing the first uh, four in the, in the beginning of the game. So yeah, he, he's back on track. He's a lefty. Make, lefties always make it look good. But at the end of the day, you still got to roll it and execute. The Hall of Famer's going to execute. Mm -hmm. Now we need to see Leon, again, his last frame, he threw a good shot and got a strike. Let's make sure he stays on track as well. Yeah, and we're looking at Marcus Bella. Um, started off with 258, and he's on 279 pace. I think he understands the assignment. I think he can't prepare for this match. Last year, Marcus Bell didn't bowl as good, but this year he's tearing the lanes up. He's making a difference in this match right here. And Leon Stone leads the seven count. His ball did not follow. He didn't follow through all the way. 
and he didn't come through with any energy, and he left the seventh pin. He got the ball to the spot, but like we, we were just talking about as far as finishing and following through on the ball, that ball had no hand on it and just died on the Did you see how, how high Mark, oh, Marcus Bell yes. leaves like say, split. Say, say what you really say. He really got that ball at the bottom and yes. got the ball a lot of hands. But he missed his if, mark. That's if the only you problem. miss inside and <laughs> bowl around, the yeah. ball will check up on you. I don't care who you are. And we that was a prime example of that moment just now. Now, the thing here is Marcus Bell can still pick that spare up. Mm -hmm. Indeed, that's a, a makeable, a more than likely missable, but it's still a chance of making it. But you're up. Do you want to be a hero or do you want to just go for the three? I would go for the three, but I would go and throw it as if I'm pulling at the 10 pin, but would put some finish on the back end of that ball, and it still could get the other two pins on the other side. I that's would, a real makeable spare. I would look at the score, and I would go from there. Let me make sure I get the amount of pins I can to help my team. If I make it, I got lucky. If not, I got three, maybe four, as Marcus Bell just did, and we go from there. Yes, Mr. Marcus Bell almost picked that up. Go from a uh, uh, potential 279 to potential 242 finish. That is true. Let's see what happens. See. Mike Taylor with a strike right there. So now we are through seven frames right now. SBC's at 461 whip handicap. Secret Society is at 415 whip handicap. Five to eight frame. Right now, uh, SBC has a breathing room, but Tiffany Bell needs to put some nails in the coffin. She needs to throw another strike here. She I, can't rest on her laurels from the last frame where she threw one strike. I, I, definitely, agree. I, de I definitely agree, and she, she must have heard you from back here. Again, yeah. you don't want to give Secret Society the opportunity. They are that caliber of team that if you, if you leave the door open, they will walk through that door and walk you down. They say don't poke the bear. You don't want to poke the bells either. Oh, my God. Because bells bite oh. like bears, and oh. they scratch too. Oh God! Scratch I, that one. I thought bells only ring, but okay, <laughs> we, we, we're gonna go with that one. Listen to me. <laughs> but, well, you know, uh, when, when something rings, you gotta answer. Opportunity is ringing right now, That's Mr. Moore. That's true, and but but it looks like Tiffany Bell's answering the phone. Oh yes, it is. Yeah. Now, let's see what Dave Knight does here. He needs another strike, here. and he gets one. So that's two in a row for the first time in a long time for Dave Bell. Hopefully that means that he's ready and primed for the next game. He needs to finish out with strikes here. Can't have an open at all. And he has to hope that Tiffany Bell doesn't continue on the strike fest that she's performing right now as well. Mm, two times in a long time as a while. That's wild work, but, but accurate nonetheless. Because based on what I'm seeing, it was a while. Definitely a big double by Dave. Again, you might at this rate, looks like, with the score-wise, you never know what can happen. SBC goes up 2-0 on this pair. But you just never know what the total pin count is. You want to get as many pins as you can, and we still got one more game to bowl. You never know what can happen come that third game. Mr. Chris Johnson just threw a turkey for SBC. They're, they're, every time uh, Secret Society comes back and tries to get back in the match, SBC seems to be able to pull away. That's a big double by Tiffany Bell in the eighth frame. And couple follow up with a trio with uh, Chris Johnson. Being as though Mr. Marcus Bell had a split in the seventh frame. So that, that, that's when your teammates have your back. Yes, they saw that Chris, uh, that Marcus Bell split. So they, they told themselves, let's get up there and throw a good quality shot and see what happens. And for both of them to strike, with Tiffany Bell counting 30 coming up in the ninth frame, possibly, and the Hall of Fame of Chris Johnson still striking, Gives Marcus Bell open like you don't even see it up on the scoreboard right now with those two holding him up. Now, the significant thing here in this second game for Secret Society is that uh, Leon Stone shot a 234 the first game, but now I don't, what pace is he on? Uh, oh, Marcus Bell with a ring in 10 minutes. A 242 pace? What is it now, sir? Well, provided that he makes the spare, it will now. No, Leon Stone. you talking about, uh, you talking about uh, Marcus Bell. Provided yeah. that he makes a spare and then changes to a 232 pitch. Okay, now let's see what uh, Leon Stone can do. Leon Stone needs to get hot and needs to follow through on what he's doing. He needs to throw a strike here again. And he does. That like a little help. Like a little help. Good ball, though. Again, that ball is a little bit slow. Get the nine pin late, but still, you're right. Leon needs to get more focus. And again, we still got one more game to go. This is not over yet. You say to yourself, you bowl until your bowling shoes have to come on. And you get the many pins as you can get. No matter how far you down, you try your best to cut into the lead. 
They go all over that 10 pin was Mr. Marcus Bell. And you're right, you got to keep your foot on it right now. Chris Johnson, uh, consummate professional, Hall of Famer, might I add, doing Hall of Fame things. We saw Leon Stone, he made his adjustment, and we see on the bottom right there, Michael Taylor. Uh, smoothing it up himself, maybe following the lead. Similarities between him and Leon Stone's game, maybe feeding off of each other's adjustments. And once again, the person who leads off is the one who sets the tone here. Agreed. And it looks like Dave Knight has righted his ship from the first game, and Mike Taylor has also righted the ship, and now they're coming along with, with Leon, Leon Stone. The question is, can they finish strong in, in this, in, with the opportunity here presented to them? Give yeah, Mike Taylor credit. That was a big shot counting 30 going to the ninth frame. Because right now his team is down by 40 some of our players. They're still in this match. And Tiffany Bell comes back with a, 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 a turkey. This is going to be interesting to see how you finish the game. Again, I think we talked about communication earlier. I'm going to keep repeating that because I really believe communication is key. Marcus and Chris Johnson were talking to Tiffany. She made a ball change after leaving back-to-back 10 pins. She's down on three in a row. Well, you know, that's that crock pot cooking. It may take a while, but in the end, it tastes so good. And right now, her game's falling off the bone right now. And we said before, Tiffany Bell in this building is one of them as far as the females go. She throws the ball. Hell, she beat some of the men in this building. She throws it really good in this building. Well, if y'all remember, I was mentioning to you guys earlier that she wasn't that far off. She kept getting nine counts. She was always around the pocket. So any, you can, it was just a matter of time for her to begin to step on the gas and begin to make some strikes here. Ninth frame, big strike by Dave in the ninth frame for Cecilia Sire. Chris Johnson himself follows up with a strike here in the ninth frame, give him four in a row on 279 pace. And I see, you know what, I see a lot of teeth being shown for good reason, a lot of pearly whites, and they're trying to sing a lullaby, and they're trying to put the society of secrecy to sleep. Well, I'm going to say this here. And I'm no procrastinator, but right now, after this after this second match, SBC could be up by 400 sticks after this second game. And to me, after that, with that in mind, this match could definitely be over. Yeah, yeah. I'm from, you know, you may not be a prognosticator, but right now, if they keep doing what they're doing, we might have to get that proctologist to remove some some toes and feet from somebody. From, uh, is that a mercy rule? You got a toe? So, yes. I, we all, what if they throw it back? Oh, that's not even that's not that's not even talk that way. Yeah, we're not, well, we're we not all, even gonna we talk no, that way. No I'll tell you matter. One thing. You can throw a towel if you want, but they may be throwing it. At, well, yeah. Well, guess what? Some people think things are done until they bite into it. You might have to eat what you just said. No matter, <laughs> no matter what the numbers look like. I've never seen you, a team come back you, 400 pins. Again, down. I agree, but you still bowl until the bowl is That's right. Come you on. always bowl and so, give yourself a chance. Th th and that's all you can do. At the end of the day, we the way it looks right now, like we said. We don't really want to stamp it, but this looks like SBC will move on. Yes, but as far as secret society go, you want to give it your all until your all is no more to give. You always want to leave it out on the lane. Yes, you no never ma want no it matter to be what. Exactly. See if Mike Taylor throws another strike here, you get a four back here. And he leaves a ring at 10 pins. So again, I've been watching their pair, and I thought their pair also, depending on where you got the ball at on the lane, the 10 pin was going to stand. And But I thought that others would definitely watch what was going on on the lane to make the proper adjustments. But we've seen a, a, so many 10 pins right now. I think people are just comfortable getting the ball to the pocket as opposed to trying to carry it. Yes, exactly. And, and the funny part is nobody has any opens in, in, on either team. So it lets you know that they're bowling very good in terms of the, 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 the level of competition that's here. But when you leave a lot of nine counts, even though it shows that you're in the pocket, it's not, if your ball's not driving through the pins, it's not going to, not, most nine times out of ten, you're not going to get strikes. At the end of the day, you want to come in here and throw good quality shots, like I said. Secret Society, again, has been in this position before, but today it looks like SBC just came a yeah. little bit more ready today. The Secret Society. And they're bowling much better than they did in the, in the first round today as they are doing now. They're more relaxed. They seem to have a good idea what to do. Dave Knight throws a four-bagger, so he seemed to have right in his ship. So this last game, I just want to see a good game, and I, I would love to see Secret Society win the match. I'm not, I mean, you know, win the match. I, I would love that. I'm from the PA South. But I still think that right now, uh, SBC is just too much to handle right now. But still, 
you keep fighting. Like you said, Dave threw that shot. Right now on the scoreboard is 607 SBC, Secret Society 594. You just don't want to give in. You still want to keep throwing because you never know what can happen. Dave threw that first strike to count 30, and Tech Bell threw a six count. So again, you made ground, and that's all you really want to do until your bowling shoes come off. You can do no more than that. Yeah, the, the thing, that thing called momentum makes a girl of a difference. Dave Knight needs a strikeout, and he has to hope that Tiffany Bell at least gets a ringing uh, pin just to give his team a shot. Doesn't mean that Secret Side's gonna win, but you know, you want that momentum going into the 10th frame. Secret Side has two spares, and, and uh, SBC has strikes. Momentum is so key, especially when you're trailing, because you want to try to make and, and Dave Knight up. still another strike. You yeah. want to get as you get you want to get as much momentum as possible going into the third game because the bowlers themselves probably don't know their total pin count. So you say to yourself, we could be down 40 or up 40. We could be down 100 or up 100. But what you want to do is keep bowling because you don't know what the pin count yes, is. Yes, you want to continue on with the momentum for your team. Oh, and Tiffany Bell just did a major whiff. She got none of them. She so has that, that, that game with a 193, but her team is so it's still in the major match. They're waiting for the second bowler here, Mr. Chris Johnson, to see if he can pick her up. He Hall seems to have a very good look from the left side. That Hall of Fame on that left side, counting 30 if he throws the first one. But give Dave credit for throwing the first two in attempt to put his team in position to have a chance. You just never know what can happen. Like we just said, we just seen Tiff Bell go six count and get none of them. So you just never know what can happen here with Chris Johnson. But again, Hall of Famer throws it good, and Dave is making sure that he throws it good because he's making sure he finished off on his team. That's right. Chris Johnson said he's not just a, a, another name. He's, he's bringing his game. He's, he's, he's got a big game today. He's the Chris Johnson. Hall yes, of sir. Famer. Yes, sir. For the reminder for the people who don't know. <laughs> he said you better recognize. And Dave Knight throws a seven count for the last game. Dave Knight. I'm on the mic. Dave Knight ends the, the second game with a 241. Tiffany Bell ends with a 193. Still, technically, it's still anybody's game. Chris Johnson would have to throw a split and fall down and hurt himself before he before his, he would mess up. And as soon as he says that, he needs a. Uh, Seven count. If there was seven count. So I'd rather leave the seven count than leave a mother-in-law. So I mean, then leave a uh, baby split. <laughs> you never know what can happen in these matches. Like I said, right now, with that seven count by Chris Johnson, that gives SBC 626. Secret Society has 621 with Leon not throwing the ball yet in the 10th frame. You just never know how it can go. If I was Leon Stone, I would wait until Chris Johnson picked up his spare or if he chopped it and then I would go and throw my ball. So here's why we're a little different. I would have wanted to go first with his ball right now. Ooh, he's ring a ten ring pin. and 10 pin. I would have wanted right to go. right there in the pocket, right there in the I pocket. I would have wanted to go if I was there and put the pressure on Chris Johnson to make his spare. You have to cover this spare if I get up there and throw that first strike. That's true, but Chris Johnson better not chop this. Again, he be again you better not. Uh-oh. Okay, he picked it up. It looked like he dropped it. it looked, no, it's not disrespect. He, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. He's the Hall of Famer, but you never know. I've seen you miss a couple, buddy. I'm not a Hall of Famer. Nowhere near it. I'm not a Hall of Famer. Nowhere near it. I'm not a Hall of Famer. I set you up. No, no, I apologize. I set you up. I'm coming your nuts. Come on, man, we talking. We're talking. Oh, oh, Leon missed the 10-pin miss. Leon Stone misses the 10-pin. So Leon Stone goes out with a 186. And Chris Johnson can go out with 256. Even though that's a, that's a difference of 60 pins right there. That's a hurt right there. Even though Leon Stone didn't strike on his first ball, the spare conversion there would have been critical. Because right now, mathematically, it's 646 to 639 SBC. He really needed to cover that spare because you never know what the temperature. You never know home. what can happen. Had to make that spare. That's they, a crucial spare. Just, just for just for the uh, opportunity to win the game, you want to pick that spare up. Chris Johnson goes out with a 256. Let's see what Mike Taylor does with his first ball. If he strikes here and Marcus Bell doesn't do what he needs, uh-oh. Oh, boy. Mike Taylor with a split, and that will almost assure the win for SBC. For SBC. On so SBC on the first team handicap will be up four, four, four to nothing. Question is, even though Secret Society is down, this is even a, this is even a closer game. Secret Society actually can come back and actually 
well, now we have to see what Marcus Bell does in this game here. Even still, you are correct with your statement. Secret Society had a chance to possibly win this game. They sure did. They, and they were in this game in the 10th frame, even, even with Marcus Bell throwing that strike. But again, total pins count. You want to get the max you can get. You get the leadoff bowler, Dave, to go 27 in the 10th, but you get Leon and Mike at the bottom and, and the second and third spot to open in the 10th, which gives SBC more cushion to open up the lead total pace yes. wise. And that, that gives them more breathing room, which allows you to relax and throw the ball with not, not worrying about, okay, that they can potentially come back as on total pin. Which definitely puts pressure on now on Secret Society in the third game to try to put up a great number automatically to win, but also either cut down the total pins or take the lead. But that's way, that's a lot of pressure yes, to do. If you're able to cut down on the total pins, what can happen is in the, in the final game, say Secret Society was down, what, 60 pins on this pair in the first game. If, they, if uh, Marcus Bell picks up this, this pair, Secret Society will be down, what, 70 sticks? Yes. So, oh. No, 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 I'm sorry. I they correct you. 60, they'll be down. down 30 this game, too. So they'll be 96 no, 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 totals. 90, 90 down after now, two. That's, that's, and again, kind, that's kind of hard to come back and, and lose. Def definitely a lot because you, don't, you, never, you never know what can go on. Transition. And we saw Secret Society threw the ball pretty good, just in a couple of 10 pins away from being either winning or more closer in closer this match. Closer in the match. That's right. Yes. And what you want to do, you want to keep it close because if you win for this match. If you keep the the, the, the game close, you never know. I know. So now we're going to go down here uh, to the scratch pair again to finish up the match. Back down here in the scratch pair, Kenny Lowe with a strike to start off game number three in the anchor spot for SBC. Mr. Kenny Lowe throwing strikes, Ace Austin, and uh, um, uh, Mr. If my Young man, fella, Mr. 21-year-old. If my man serves me correctly, SBC is up on the scratch pair two games to nothing. Yeah, I got you. I got you, motherfucker. I gave it to the dog. The dog game. The dog game. The dog game. We got Ace up here to start frame number two of game three for the scratch pair. And Ace almost These with the 10 pound. Ball looked good off his hand, though. They got down the lane. Ace Austin in the second game shot or two. That's rough. Yeah. So we got Ant Winston up here. Frame number two of game number three with SBC up two games to nothing on. Secret Society, Ant with a nine count. I would love to know what the total count is across the board because the team, the, the pair that has been tearing it up tremendously has been SBC's second team handicap. Real easy, even though we talked about how good Secret Society is, but today SBC, from the look so far, Ace covers the 10 pence there. Secret Society right now is trailing by a lot, but again, they're going to fight to the bonus shoes come off, man. Today, in this match with SBC, it just, it just looks like today was SBC's day. One of the things that you'll begin to see is who bowls more together throughout the season, and how does that translate? They're up by 307 sticks after, and they won every game? So after two games, right now, SBC is up 12 to 0, and they are up total pins 307 total pins SBC right now. That's pretty much hard to come back from. We're going to go down here to the second team handicap where these gentlemen by themselves are beating Secret Society for total pins. So down here right. on handicap two, SBC at the leadoff spot, we have Rajar R Lord Rocky McCray. We got Donnell Bell in the second spot. And Mr. Dan Bright coming up the anchor spot for SBC on Handicap 2. Okay, and there's not no picnic here, but you're on the uh, second team handicap for Secret Society of Keith Poppity, Robert Perkins, and Bill Ripley. And unfortunately, it looks like 
this match on this pair is over already. I, if, yeah, so the numbers we just got, of course, SBC's up 2-0 on this pair as well. It's 4-0. I'm sorry, they won the first two. They won yes, the NFL four nothing on, um, on the, after the first two matches on handicap number two. Again, man, it just looked like Secret Society ran to a buzz all today. SBC just has they're throwing it good. They're getting the curry. Again, Secret Society not throwing the ball bad. They were throwing good shots. A, 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 we've seen a lot of ten pins today for Secret Society. They can't afford to have any more opens in this in the route. Robert Perkins just threw a, uh, he just missed the three on the right side, and he, uh, he chopped, he left the 10 pin. The question is now, at this point, what can Secret Society do? They run up against a buzzsaw, and all you want to do is have a good showing at this point. Whether you win the game or not, you just want to throw the ball good as best you can. You still want to talk to your teammates, and you know that, unfortunately, if you've looked across the, the board on the other pairs, you know that your team is down. So again, if, if I'm in Secret Society's position, knowing that we're down, yes, I'm still talking to my team like we're up. Rather than being down 307, we're up 307. I'm going to continue talking to my team, trying to motivate them to continue bowling, doing what they need to do just to throw good quality shots until our bowling shoes come off. Okay, well, let's look at here. Let's look at the performance of, between uh, Secret Society and uh, SBC on the second team handicap. Right now, Mr. Rashawn McCray started the first game off with a 279, followed up with a 258. That's kind of hard to beat. If the person he's going up against, Mr. Keith Poppy, who's not a pushover by far, he started off with a 236 and came back with 235. He's still trying to keep the game close. He's still staying in the fight. Mr. Robert Perkins started the first game off 216. First game, he doubled it up with a 216 the second game. Question become, Mr. Bill Ripley, is having some having some struggles in this game. He had a 189 and a 157 versus uh, Mr. Darnell Bell on the, on the uh, team for uh, SBC as the number two bowler. He shot 216 first game, so he tied Mr. Robert Perkins. But the second game, he shot a 158. But once again, his teammates picked him up. Mr. Daniel Bright came back with a, well, started the first game off with 287, and second game he came back with a 252. The question is, what can Secret Society do to try to change their this fortune here? So again, they're down 307 total pins. All you can do as the team of Secret Society is take your team one frame at a time, go up here and throw your ball, and let's see what happens when it's over. It being as though you're down 307, you want to say to yourself it's over, but you still want to keep your team in the fight. You don't want your team to act like it's over, even though the numbers are showing that it's over, but you want to fight until it's actually over. Not only that, you also don't want to get swept. You don't want to get a 40-piece in the playoff. That that would be demoralizing. Now, I, I'm not one to be talking, but that would be demoralizing. I would not want to get swept. So somebody got to win on one pair, one game. That would definitely sit with you and your team for a while. You're never going to forget the moment that you made it to the playoffs. And within the playoffs, knowing the caliber of team that you are, you got you lost 40 to zero. Yeah. So absolutely want to win a point somewhere yeah. within the three within the three front the three match. And you know, and now you got to climb out of a 332 pin hole. Oh, they down 30, 332, not 307. Right. Not 307. So oh still, my goodness. They, they are down by more. Shout out to SBC's Dan Bright at the game one today. In his final four, he went 287, 252. Earlier today in the first round of the playoffs, he went 279, 279. So he's been tearing it up all day. Dan what Bright saying. has been, and he has spare three in a row to start game number three on handicap two. Daniel Bright has been the spark for SBC today, definitely with this numbers today so far. And it looks to me that Secret Society is giving a, a better uh, effort this match, but it looks like here on this next ball here, these young fellas on on, uh, on SBC 17 handicap, Mr. McCray, he just shot a turkey. It's kind of hard when you're not throwing strikes. I don't care who you are. Even though you're picking up spares, it keeps you in the game, but strikes allows enables you to forge ahead. I spoke about Daquan Tyler earlier at 21 years old. If I'm not mistaken, Rashawn McCray is 20 years old. What oh I'm going to tell goodness. you, today's youth 
Bowling is in great hands with our youth bowlers, people. I really want you to know that. This is for me, Mike Shaw from the DMV area with two bowlers on SBC right now. And I know there are plenty of other youth bowlers all over. But for Sean McCray and Daquan Tyler right now, the way they're throwing the ball, man, youth bowling is in great hands. I'll tell great you hands. one thing. If I, was a, if I was a bowler on one of these teams, if I wanted to get into the match, that means that I have to go even work even harder on my game become more knowledgeable about the game and in order to get in front of these gentlemen. These young fellas is tearing these lanes up like somebody took their lunch money. Donnell Bell with a strike for SBC on four in a row. Today's youth are just strictly bowling off God-given natural talent. Can yeah. you imagine if they actually really like got into it with training, with coaching, mm. how good they will be? Again, people, please give to the youth, man. Look out for them. They are our future when it comes to bowling. Well, they saying their future is now. Stop discounting what I'm doing. That's what I heard. Hey, I listen. ain't want to gossip, but that's what I'm listening to. Yeah, very much so. They don't really care. They tell all, everybody. <laughs> when we got our bonus shoes, we plan on defeat no matter who else got on bonus shoes. Uh -huh. That's how much confidence these youngers have nowadays. They I really guess do. the good thing is it's a confidence as well as you have to have a reckless mindset of saying, I, I respect you, sir, but I'm here to beat you. I'm, we on the lanes. I'm on the lanes just like you are. I'm not here to be so respectful. I want to help my team win. And, you know, and I want to give a shout out to all teams with strong carpet crews. And, you know, even even the best car needs your battery right. Because if your battery ain't right, you ain't getting nowhere. It doesn't matter what your GPS says. We got Rob Perkins just double here in the fifth frame for Secret Society and Dan Bright with an eight count. We now have uh, Will Ripley up, who's also on three in a row. They are fighting at least to get, and he throws another one. Hey, give it up. Secret Society is still bowling. They still got their bonus shoes on, no matter what the pin count is. They are still fighting, and that's really what you want from your team at all times. Yes, you do, and I'm going to say this, too. A lot of people underestimate the presence of your team during a playoff match. I see a whole lot of SBC bowlers supporting their team who are not bowling at this moment in time, but I don't see as many Secret Society bowlers out here supporting. And they have a big roster. So again, it's all about people's availability. Like if they're here, we're able to make it the Battle Bowl this year. But again, being in the, in the district where SBC is, they have a following. Their, their, their conference shows up to support them at tour stops, ranking matches, and of course, as you can see now, Battle Bowl. They show up for their team. Well, I'm going to say this here about support. SBC is coming from the DMV location. Yes. Six aside, this is really like in their home area. Agreed, yes. I would expect more bowlers and support Agreed. from their team Definitely to agree. be here than anything else. And again, all UVA teams, I think, stress that so much. Tour stops, again, ranking matches, and again, battle bowl. You tell your teammates when you're communicating with them, hey, we need everybody there, as many people as we can get the support for the playoff match. And you the, want them here. And the other thing is, too, say you're a, a bowler who I bowled with in the past, and I know you're game. If I see that you're missing a couple of uh, times a day, and I trust as a bowler what you're saying to me, I might be able to say, hey, you know, what do you see? But if you're not here to help me, you're leaving your teammates out to dry. That's why it's important that you come and support your teammates throughout. Yeah, you know, and you got to have that mentality of it's not where you're from, it's where you're at. Agreed. Because when yes. you show up somewhere, I mean, when the bell ring, you can't run back home because it's a long drive. You better stay there. You better throw some punches or maybe pull a little Zangief and just start uh, spinning, spraying, and praying. And that's <laughs> Sean Dyke with our boxing <laughs> <laughs> analogies here. And uh, more like a street fighter. And right now, speaking of a controller and a game console, they're controlling the game very, very well. And then after you play the game, you got to cool the system off. You got to press reset because you got more playing to do. It's all about who you're going to be playing in the future. That's right. It looks like here, unfortunately, SBC, a Sikh Society's run has come to an end. And SBC looks like they're going to the championship match. You always... any, word, any, any word on the uh, other match going on? Um, only words with honorable mentions about um, 300s that were thrown. I'm going to go look to see exactly what that's looking like, and I will be back to you with that. Thank Appreciate you, Mr. It. Good look, good look, good look. So we got right now, I think that's Dan Bright with an eight count for SBC here in the sixth frame. Handicap, th handicap two, we have 391 for SBC. Secret Society has 359 with Will coming up in the uh, sixth frame on four in a row. So again, like you said earlier, you just keep fighting until it's over. And right now, Secret Society is trying on his handicap two pitch. And if Bill Ripley throws a strike here, which it looks like he did, 
Six Shy have a 389. Stone has scored. This, actually, this game is actually closer than we than, This is their best game on this pair. So far since they've been bowling that game, yes it is. Even with uh, Rashawn McCray and I think that's Donnell. Uh, is it Donnell Bell? Yes. And, for, yeah, and, and Donnell Bell are both on counting on uh, Donnell Bell is on six. Five in a row, and you have uh, Rashawn McCray on four in a row. And Chica Society is still right now down 12 pins. They're still fighting, even though the match mathematically, numbers wise, is over for Chica Society. But you have the handicap two pair right now. They are still fighting for a point. They're, they need a point because the most important thing at this point is not to get swept. I don't think nobody ever wants to get swept, man. That's how you, and then, and, and like you said earlier, it's in the playoffs. There's no way you get to this point and you get swept in the playoff, even though Little Rocket does another strike for Rashawn McCray at uh, SBC. Exactly. This is going to be quite interesting. Looks like Darnell Bell has an opportunity to throw a six-bagger, six in a row, follow his leadoff man, Mr. McCray. Looks like Daniel Bright get to take their rest of the afternoon off almost. The way it looks so far. But again, I don't know if they want the 40-piece or not. I know there are some teams, when they are in this position, they want the 40-piece. Keith with a 10 pin. Some teams, when they realize that they up right now and want the 40-piece, they actually go get it. But again, Secret Society still, knowing that they're down, knowing that there's a, a high chance that this is over, they're going to lose. They are here, still bowling, still competing. Trying to get a point from somewhere out of these three, out of these three matches. Yeah, I'm going to do some psychological things. One of the things you can do, you can slow the, the pace of the SBC up by taking a little longer on the lanes. The other thing is you can make it so that you can jump in front of their bowler and bowl first to see if you can at least change the, their, their focus at least on the match. You got to do something different to change the momentum that SBC is just running so, through here. So, so what we've seen so far watching all three, all three um, pairs, SBC was in rhythm. Their bowlers were in rhythm, shots were flowing, good quality shots, communicating. So yes, you're right. Let me take my time before I go bowl my first shot in the fifth frame. Let me go talk to my teammates. Let me make you say to me, hey, you gonna bowl? Like, we'll take us on all. Do whatever I can to get you off tilt just a little bit. Just a little bit. To see bit. if that bothers you. Because having a free swing like this is hard to defeat. I don't care what team you are. That is correct. And the, and the problem is, is that they cannot slow down the momentum that uh, SBC is exhibiting in the, on the second team handicap. It's unbelievable how good they're bowling today. You would have thought they were scratch for Yeah. So here's Sean Knight with the update. Oh. Yeah, so right now, I didn't get it on paper, but right now Mutiny is up 8-4, but they're battling to get total wood. So wow. it's coming down to the wire. What is the what is the difference right now in your estimation of the total wood? Well, when I went over there, it was uh, around 28 pins. Oh, so that's within that's within uh, a with, range in order yes. to yes. in order to finish off the match in order to steal the match away. Be honest with you. Yeah, within whisper room, and right now the whispers are sounding like screams because every single pin counts in that kind of situation. And just with, just for the record, who is Mutiny bowling against? They are bowling against Train. Two, right? two, Train Wreck. Who have um, a total of maybe three three hundreds that were thrown in big match situations? We have Carson, we have Chris Jerome, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Chris Jermaine, and um, there was I, no. I maybe have a foresight. So far, only two. Maybe I'm predicting the future. All I know is that train wreck. If they knock off Mutiny, you have to wonder if they're the favorites to take everything. But the, another argument, you cannot argue about somebody who came into the match before going into the finals and just potentially gave a 40 piece out now let my um, oh yes that's true my next question is this who's winning the match in the third game thus far in the third game between mutiny and uh train wreck uh i i blinked twice and it shifted twice so right now, okay. so the uh, only thing i know Still is close it's very close okay. and i will definitely um be looking forward to see what's going to happen there because it can either be someone steering a pirate ship or someone steering uh, a runaway train uh oh i wouldn't want to be around neither one of them uh, yeah yeah big they vehicles sound, they sound like trouble yeah, big this vehicles. Could, this could be an all South uh, uh, Battle Bowl finals, what you're saying, sir. Uh, it could be. Um, the North being when you see the North and you see teams like BC that got knocked out and Royal Flush that got knocked out, you know, 
you got to wonder, what do I have next year? What do I have to do to prepare for next season? Exactly. Who do, who do I have to recruit to in order to make a difference, to, to make to complete my team to take me over the, over the, uh, over the top? This year, SBC has a lot of young fellas in terms of Mr. Uh, Rashawn McCray, uh -huh. Mr. Uh, what's his name, Daquan Tyler, and Mr. Kenneth Lowe. Yeah. Those gentlemen are making a world of a difference when it comes to finalizing the, the, the playoffs yeah. in this playoff. They're making a big difference, yeah. as well as Mr. Uh, what's his name, Mr. Daniel Bright. Yes. These gentlemen are having an outstanding uh, playoff performance, and they're making a difference. So as you continue to see, you as you continue to see, they're not letting up off to allow the secret side the opportunity to get back in this match. Yeah, as we see the Richard Nixon up there on lane 60, um, the crook himself, Darnell Bell, is stealing away all aspirations of moving forward in the playoffs. And you mentioned um, the young bowlers coming here with what the old timers call out of piss and vinegar. They just know how to just keep going. They don't know how to get stopped. They get tired. Tired is basically fuel for them. You know, and, and, and that's a good, good mix, kind of San Antonio Spurs of youth and, and talent and raw just drive and experience and knowledge of the game. And that's true. And, and unfortunately, Secret Society has a lot of injuries this year mm. uh, in which is affecting their, their who they put in the lineup yeah. in terms of Mr. Troy Lint, uh, a couple other players, Mr. Donald Powell. Uh -huh. These are guys who are very familiar with high performances in the playoff. Donald Powell's bowling and other uh, playoff matches in the yes. past, but unfortunately he was not able to be here due to injury. Yeah, and uh, hopefully they get better. Uh, we already know that yeah, they're, they're strong. They're going to come back stronger than ever, and whatever they can contribute on the lanes, they will, and whatever they don't contribute on the lanes, they'll contribute to other bowlers. You know, energy is only transferred, never lost. That's true. I just don't want to see Secret Side take a... a a 40 old uh, match in this game. I mean, uh, I like Nuggets like the next person, but I never want to see them uh, made in front of me because it's not a good process to be watched. Exactly. Now, once again, uh, Mr. Rock Bill Ripley is having a great game in this third game. Right, come on back. And you know what? We got we got to say this. Shout out to Secret Society. It is never going to be a secret how tough they are. But on this day, when your name is strictly business, you got no choice but to show up and stand on that. That is correct. Moment of silence. Yeah, we're going to have to have a moment of silence because I'm like shell shocked to seeing what, what's going on in this match. This is this is not normal for a Secret Society at all. And, and look at what uh, Mr. McCray is doing. He has what? How many in a row now? A uh, he has a lot in a row with some more to go. <laughs> he has seven in a row. His partner ha has the opportunity to get eight in a row. Uh -huh. Man, I I'm telling you, man, th this is just unbelievable what's going on here. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, stick to commentating, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, you know what? And they're sticking to the script. It's strictly business cartel. And you know, you got you got something to say when on handicap two, uh, low bowler could potentially be <laughs> 56, 256. Exactly, that's that's saying something. Cause I mean he finally woke up, and M Mr. Mr. Uh, Daniel Bright actually started taking some off because he sees what the top two bowlers are doing. Oh yeah, it's still not over, but the fat lady is singing. Mm. Oh, yeah, she, she's singing in the shower right now. Yeah, she's warming up right now. I'll oh, be yeah. honest with you. Darnell Bell leaves the uh, uh, eight pin on mm. the pair. Yeah. He'll easily pick that up, but this this match, for all intents and purposes, is over. Well, no, 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 no. Say what you were saying. You would say good night to a particular lady. Good night, who? Fat lady. Good night, Irene. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that. Irene is a hurricane. That's that's what blew through here. Oh my goodness! Well, it was a torrential downpour outside, and you know what? When it rains, it pours. And well, let's just say it's pouring on yes. Secret Society for now. But you know what happens after you get 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 on the rain? You, you dry up. You get up. Dust and you yourself go back up. Come back. That's yep. right. And no disrespect to the Secret Society. It's just no. that SBC came in with bowling extremely well, and they're not missing. I don't care who you are. You bowl in this match and you see somebody throwing string of strike eight, 
seven in a row. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to, to say to yourself, okay, especially if you have a couple of opens and you have a split, that we're going to win this match. It's just hard to do that. Mm -hmm. And right here is this Mr. Bright. Well, you know what? It, it, the sun still shines for Mr. Bright because right now he can he can finish up in the gym. No more sets, no more reps. The work was put in. They're going into the to the championship matchup. I'm not sure who's going to be the favorite because both teams, when you're battle tested in matches like these, and, and, and see, SBC had a tough matchup in the first round. Mm. Now they had now they're easily winning, beating, defeating uh, Secret Society. Question is, can they go? Who they're going to meet in the in the in the in the, in the finals? Will it be Mutiny? Well, looking into the future, if it's Mutiny, who do you see? It's hard to pick against SBC at this point. All right, and if it's but you know what, Trainwreck has been finding ways to win. SBC has been um, walking in and they've been walking in strong. And all right, Mike. They might have been they might have been uh, working their way back in, but the question becomes at this point: Can they finish the match and beat you, Mutiny? So the question is, can can uh, SBC finish off this match? Keith Popney's up the bowl. He needs a strike here. Six is not out of this match, but they still need to close these frames. They need to make sure they keep throwing strikes here. And Keith Popsley throws another strike. He's in the 10th frame. He has a uh, turkey going on. Let's see if Mr. McCray can finish it out as well. He has, what, two, four, six. He has eight or seven in a, eight in a row. No, he has seven in a row. Let's see if he can throw number eight. And he does. He throws eight in a row. It's and, and like I said, I don't care what's going on. It's hard to beat a, guy, a team like that. Yeah, like I said, and, and it's a, a recipe for disaster for anybody who's trying to 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 think they can come in here and just eat them up. See, the the thing is, when, when Secret Society brought in Mr. Robert Perkins, he's actually the weakest link on that on that pair, mm. and that's what that's the difference in terms of uh, Secret Society being prepared, being able to finish the match and win versus uh, SBC. SBC is going to win the win the game, win the match as well as the game on this pair. He probably throws another strike. He has a four back. Let's see if he can throw a fifth, fifth, fifth strike here. Mr. McCray throws another strike. What a surprise. That's nine in a row. I don't care who you are. That's hard to beat. I'm, I'm telling what you. What was his first two games? So his first two games uh, before, they, they, they were big. Uh, don't have the numbers in front of me I'm right now. I'm trying to see right if now, he has an opportunity to throw an 800, 800 series. Yes. I so Daniel Bright first, was on that on that pace, but this yeah. game here took him off. I believe his first game was 79. Well, we'll, 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 we'll get a recap in a second. Keep Poppy throws a nine count with it goes out with a 247. Good game, Mr. Keep Pop, Mr. Keep Poppy, for keeping your team in the match. Let's see if. Uh, and he throws it. He goes 10 off the sheet. He finishes with a 280 game. I don't care who you are. Keep Poppy did a valiant effort trying to keep his team in the match with his 247. But unfortunately, Mr. McCray had other uh, answers for the match. He shot a 280. So this is an outstanding match. But when you got a guy bowling that well, it's very difficult for you to come back and win. Right now, unfortunately, Mr. Robert Perkins needs a, a 10 pin count. He can go out with a 189 if he picks it up and throws a strike in that frame. Okay, Mr. Mr. Dar Darnell Bell. He was on a pace for a 240, 250 game. Now he may end up with a two, 220 something game because he threw a split. Let's see if he can pick that up. Okay, it's official, not it's unofficial, Mr. McCray. Shot, he shot a 279, 258, 280 the last game, unofficially for 817 uh, scratch uh, score. 
And unfortunately, Mr. Bell did not pick it up. Doesn't seem like his team, he goes out with a 230. Doesn't seem like he needs it because Mr. Robert Perkins has struggled this game, unfortunately. Mr. Robert Perkins goes out with a 189. Let's see how SBC finishes this match. This match is not over. If Mr. Daniel Bright throws a, uh, a split, this can make a difference. Yeah, definitely throwing punches. Um, uh, Secret Society throwing punches. They have a, almost a 150-point deficit um, in their favor. Unfortunately, um, everybody else couldn't get on the same accord. Now, based on what the scratch pair of Secret Society is doing this game, if other pairs could have at least did, dare I say, 75 apiece off of what they're doing, it would have been a game. Uh, they, they understood the assignment over there. Unfortunately, it did not come to fruition on the other pairs. Secret Society, shout out to their scratch pair for fighting back. And it looks like it's not going to be 40. But it's not going to be enough. At least it won't be a, a, a sweep. We knew that with 323 depends down. 93. So we talked about this, Malachi. We talked about the power of SBC, but we talked about the magic this playoff season that is Trainwreck, who were um, controlling the wood, and since they were in control, they started um, turning up the heat and turning up the speed. They are now up 90-some-odd pins on the total wood in a match that's coming down to that total wood. So now, with that said, if, if Trainwreck can hold on, they were down earlier, but to mutiny in the match, so... Congratulations, and that's why it's not how you start, but how you finish. The question becomes, who has enough nerve to finish the matches, and, and who do you foresee being the, the uh, a favorite going into the final round? It's tough to say. That's going to be a messy fight. SBC, they're definitely made for this, but train, train wreck, I don't think they, I don't think they want to leave yet. I think, they have, I think they're enjoying this, and I don't think they're trying to let it go. Well, I'm going to tell you now, if SBC keeps, keeps this up, throwing 800 uh, series, they're going to win this match. They're going to win the final. They're going to win everything. They they were close last two years. They came back. They retooled their, 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 their the performances of their team. And now the question is, oh, hold on now. No, nah, the secret side still can't win the match. They came back violently, but they can't win the match, even if uh, Bill Ripley throws a strike. He only gets 10 pins on this pair. Mm. So if, if, if Bill Ripley throws a strike, they'll, they'll lose series. I mean, yeah, totals is 748 to 732. They also lose the series 10 nothing. So unfortunately, it was, a, it was a valiant effort. They bought it this game, but they needed all three games. Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. And you know what? Like you said, no disrespect to a team who's been here before. Like I said, it's never been a secret about Secret Society. And for those, while Malachi was talking, who heard the choo-choo in the background, it means that it's definitely going to go down. And right, it's we're going like to go down and see if Secret Society can save the match. Yeah. Both, but, and see if they can uh, get their scratch pair to actually finish the, finish the game and carry it on and see if they can actually finish the match. Looks like they can with no problem. Mm-hmm. And let's see um, if even though in a losing effort, let's just see um, if we can still get a 300 game on on the bottom side from Dave, the left from side, Dave Adams. From Dave Adams. Is that Dave Adams Jr.? Jr., that is correct. Well, Put right. some respect on his name. That's right. And you know what? Uh, hey, respect. Respect is definitely earned, and they are earning, and they have earned everything they've got. And that confirms it. <laughs> train wreck is in the is in the finals. Looks like it's gonna be train wreck versus SBC. Mm. Let's see if Dave Adams he had to throw a 300 game in order to give his team an opportunity to at least win one game in this match. 279 potential uh, potentially up top also for so even though someone shoots a 300, if you if you have another bowler who can negate that by being as close as he can you only have to subtract the difference. So mm -hmm. right now, Secret Society in this final game, I wonder how many pins they were down in the, in the first game.
first two games. But right now, it looks like they can win by at least 100 pins. Now, I think that Secret Society has an opportunity to take totals on the scratch pair. Oh, they definitely have an opportunity to take total on the scratch pair. Um, it'll, it'll stop some of the bleeding, but it couldn't stop the initial drain out, which was that 30, that 332 pin deficit going in. Well, that's to across, game three. that's across that's the board. Across the board. We're talking about on this pair. Well, on, on this pair, they're definitely going to get total. Yeah. Well, not, I, I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking. Oh, yes. I'm trying to determine what was the difference. Uh, the difference was a matter of about a, I want to say, uh, 80. Uh, but I'm going to get those, that sheet back from Mr. Shaw. I, I think they were down like 90 sticks, if I'm not mistaken. 97 sticks. Yeah, I could be wrong. Yo, go get your paper, man. Ace Awesome has the opportunity to double up in the 10th frame. First ball is out. And he builds a messenger and gets a strike there. It's the only pair that won for Secret Society, though. No, they was up 323. SBC was up 323 going into this game. Ace Austin doubles up, gets a turkey. Ace Austin could go out with a 237. And the person that he's going against, Tyre, can actually still go out with 258. For secret side on the scratch pair, Mr. Anthony Winston Jr. is the one that is making a difference in terms of falling off from Mr. Kenneth Lowe. So this is what enables Secret Society to be able to come back and possibly win totals on this on the scratch teams, on the scratch pairs total pins. So actually Secret Society can actually win the scratch pair six to four. And Ace Austin goes out for the 237. Mr. Daquan Tyler goes out for the 250. Looks like uh, on the scratch pair, Mr. Anthony Winston has given up. He's already in the third frame with a, I mean, ninth frame with 136. The best he can do is go out with a 256. I mean, 156. When your leadoff man shoots a 258, and you got, they were doing a hell of a job for the first two games, but you allow Secret Society to come back and steal the total pins on your pair, that can be demoralizing. Very. Especially when you're going into the playoffs in the next round. So they have to get something squared away. I don't know if you're going to have Mr. Anthony Wright, a 242 bowler coming in into the into the championship game after what his performance that he's done in this in this in this game here in the third game. He's actually had, had trouble throughout the match thus far. Yeah, um, Daquan Tyler shot amazing. Daquan Tyler also was flirting with eight, just shy of it. Woo. They would have had two 800s on the same team in the playoff. So yeah. That is outstanding. Just to be flirting with it is still outstanding. I'm telling you, what what, what can you say? You know, but at least you're going you're going out on your shield, especially uh, if you're a secret society. You didn't want to lay down. You didn't want to give anything up. And let me tell you something. The next match is going to be something. It's going to be it's going to be a, it's going to be a movie. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be something to to to, uh, to observe. And six sides going to have to go back and say to themselves, what do we have to do in order to get to the championship match? Again, it's, it's, it's not it's not easy to get there. I'm sure you want to make you. To me, I think they might have to work on their chemistry just a little bit in terms of allowing bowlers to bowl together more and more and more throughout the year, so that when the playoffs come, they either feel comfortable not just using it by names, but now you want to say, okay, look, need to move here. This is what I'm seeing here. Yep. So this is where the chemistry flow comes in. That Dave Adams going into the tenth frame on the scratch pair with potential 300. I can't say too many other great things, anything new pertaining to Dave Allen. He's an accomplished bowler. 
He's a he's a head no, he's a head and shoulders above a lot of bowlers. He's a great competitor. Let's see if he throws a strike here. And he does. He throws a strike here. First ten in a row. He's at through eleven and twelve, and he's done. Well, at least one thing to take home with you. I showed up, and potentially, I can say this. Maybe I'm saying a little early, but I just would say, you know what? I shot Trey. That's right. In the playoffs. I might shot bad the second game, but I came back and throw the 300. So it shows that he has the ability to make the adjustments throughout mm -hmm. the match. You know, you know, anything doesn't matter if it's 300 or 400. Um, it's hard to come back from something like and that. And Dave Adams throw the 11th ball. Yep. Now it's come down to the last ball where he can throw a 300. That's, That's the right. most excitement I've seen Dave Adams have in a long time. There you go. Not only is he excited for that, but he may be excited for a cold, refreshing drink and maybe some hot food and, and, and a warm bed and then a good drive home. <laughs> now, you know what's funny? SBC up was up by 323 sticks. They could have came back they could have came back and stayed. They could have came back and made it even more interesting if their first and second team handicap had was able to come back and win by at least 50. They're right. You're absolutely right. They could have. And like I, and like I was saying before, with, with, with Dave Adams Jr., congratulations on, congratulations that, 300, on that 300. You know, and the other parents, if they could have just jumped on the same bandwagon and did the same things, we would have been singing a different song coming towards the end. Yeah, they can't quite win by 200, but they almost did. They gave a valiant effort. But we're going to take some time. I'm the voice of choice, Sean Dye Faison. I'm Malachi Moore at the brain. And you we're know, signing off. Signing off. More coming to you tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Saturday night. Let's go.